Hello, and welcome to a very special Get to Know Your Hosts episode of Remove Film from Trey. Hello, Count. Hello, Slushy. Hello. Hello. How's it going? We're doing top tens. Very excited about today. Very excited to argue with Slushy. It's going to be great. Somebody's hammering. (laughs) I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Slushy, it's just you and me right now, filling time here. Yeah. Are you excited about your top tens? Um, yes. There are some movies that were in the top ten that are no longer. Uh, I'll explain how I came to my top ten. Was uh, it difficult for you? Back. Uh, not really. It wasn't really that difficult. It was very time consuming. Yeah, I wrote about that in words explaining all these movies. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't bother doing anything like that. What do you do you have a script or are you doing a bit? No, I have it all written out with what I'd like to say. Oh, okay. Well I that I'll stick to the script directly, but the like points I want to make about each one. So everything I have to say about all the movies that I've got on my list just comes straight from the heart. Same. Okay. Well, I don't have a heart. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're just a floating dog head. Just a floating dog head. What's that, uh, what's that monster from the, the one place? There's just a head and intestines. Oh, in Japan? The, no, it's like Indonesia you're talking about, yeah. I think. The, the pet, pet little greenie or something. Head and insides. <laughs> Penangal. Yeah. Penangalan. Yeah. Famous, famous vampire. So it's just a we... floating head with all the body insides just dangling off the bottom. I think there's some right. movies about that. They're probably on yeah. Tubi. For those that don't know, that's why Count wears a cape so that you can't see his insides. Oh, we're making. Yeah, it. it's to spare you. Welcome back, Mortis. Should we start off the show talking about what we saw this past week? Yes. Uh, Mutually. We saw them. Count showed them on his Twitch. Illegally. We have fun <laughs> here. <Thanks. clears throat> Just play it cool. Just be cool. It'll be fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cool. Uh, I've seen this like every time it came on TNT in the 90s. I, I think this is a good movie and very fun. So do I. I mean, I, I think it's fantastic. There were a lot of people in my chat who hadn't seen it or heard of it, which I thought was insane that they hadn't even heard of it, but very happy. Slushy thoughts. I had the chat uh, basically completely disabled until the okay. ants showed up so that I wasn't spoiled about what the movie was because I didn't trust anyone. <laughs> it was a good call. They, they didn't spoil it, but that was a good call. You can't trust anyone these days. I didn't think anyone would be malicious about it because you were saying, you know, over and over, like, don't spoil it, don't look it up. Yeah, I would have banned them. Just to me, but to everyone. <laughs> but I, I figured there was someone who was just going to be like, you know, a Twitch chatter. They would be just gone. Like, vomit something. As you can see, it spoils it on the poster, but it does. I, like, That's... there's another. Uh, one of my top tens, it, I decided not to use the normal American poster just because it spoils it as well. Um, it was that a 50s, 60s thing? I don't know. I would so I was like, don't even Google it because it's on the goddamn poster. I realized shortly, I realized about 30 seconds before uh, the ant was revealed for the first time that I had heard of the movie before. Well, um, that happens. Well, I mean, it was it was fine, because it was like, okay, it's it's pretty obvious at this point what with them talking about sugar all the time and the formic acid and the fucking weird footprints. It's like, oh, it's giant ants. Oh, it's them. I've heard of this movie. Um, the ant I, reveal I, is amazing. It is. It's fantastic. And, like, I always thought 
that this was just, a, you know, a corny, you know, shock movie kind of situation. And maybe that's what it was considered at, at the time or later on, whatever. Because, you know, I've I watched... It's a solid B movie. Well, that's the thing. Like, I've wa- I watched people talk about movies and the way people talk about shit sucks, usually. Um, but I thought this movie was really fucking good. Like, the acting was really... Like, was way better than I would have thought it would have been. I thought it was going to be, like, Mant. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the acting's great. The FBI and the local cops get along. The woman scientist doctor is actually confident. She's not a damsel in distress. It's pretty yeah, good. It's it's wild to think about how progressive this movie was. Not just on like a you know political level, really, but just like in the way that everything was written. The old right, science is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He just kind of went away at some point, right? Kind of towards the yeah, back of like, the movie. <laughs> they're like, you can't yeah. go on these missions. He's like, all right. <laughs> the last time I really, the last time I remember really seeing him was when, uh, no, wait, I'm thinking of man. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so the other movie we watched is matinee. Uh, I, I've been wanting to watch this for a long time. I haven't seen it since it came out on VHS. Uh, a movie within a movie. The slushy keeps talking about Mant. It's, this like movie was it's great. also <laughs> incredible. It's really good, like, tribute to a very specific era of theater and... Also, just like, wow, the 50s were really fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really expect them to, like, touch on so, like, I don't know the words here, but they they really made the, like, the Cuban Missile Crisis seem like it was, you know, like it truly affected people in a really serious way. Yeah, it, just, it did get a little corny when it came to like the the theater owner, but Robert Picardo. Yeah, I wish he was. I felt like he was a little weak in the movie. <laughs> like I normally love Robert Picardo, but he was like, he was just kind of like a caricature, really. He yeah, was, he didn't really yeah. have a whole lot of like, you know, like character. It's John, a pretty big cast, though. Yeah. A lot of kids. They're yeah, not, the... not like thirty year olds pretending to be kids. <laughs> yeah, actual kids being kids. He's the fucking doctor in Voyager. Right? Yeah, he's the doctor in Voyager, and he's the guy who makes it with the lady gremlin. I haven't seen gremlins. Like you got the kid from Hocus Pocus, and then you got the blonde kid, and like their respective circles, you know. Kid from Hocus Pocus. Yeah, isn't he in Matinee? Which one's Hocus Pocus? <laughs> isn't Hocus Pocus? Uh, is that like the, the Bette Miller thing? Right yeah. Now? Okay, I don't know. The brown. Oh, is that kid? the one where they get turned into mice? No, that's witches. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I don't know then. Omar Katz. He was also in Erie, Indiana, that TV show. Oh yeah. Okay, that that's good casting then. That makes sense. Yeah, it's all around that same time. Also, in Adventures in Dinosaur City, we'll have to watch that with Cy Raptor. Oh, the famous, yeah, the famous SNES game. I've seen the movie. It is bad. I bet. I bet it's very fun. Could be. Could be. (laughs) We'll have to see. But John Goodman was really good in this movie. I forgot sort of how good he was. Um, John Goodman is good in everything. He's just, amazing. Yeah, just, he is. Just about. He's a good fucking actor. Highly recommended film. Um, Matinee is on my top 100. Them is not. 
So I don't know. <laughs> to make of that what you will. I have been uh my top film list was basically just going off of what I remember I've seen, which is I know I've seen more than fifty eight videos or fifty nine videos movies, but that's what it ended up at. And then we watched them in matinee and they are now uh thirty five and thirty six respectively. <laughs> Uh, two of my films in my top ten are not in my top hundred movies. What? How's that work? <laughs> oh, I will explain. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on our top tens, we've agreed to have like a five-minute limit per film because we normally run two and a half hours so far, uh, and thirty movies times five is two and a half hours uh are, is that gonna work for you explaining this methodology or like yeah very easy it'll be fine. okay okay isn't no you're right no no i i got the calculator and everything yeah okay so do what? Your, your idea for this episode is for our viewers or listeners to get to know us. So I think the way that I'm doing it is a better way. And I'll explain more when it's my first turn. Oh, you're... Oh, okay. So you're doing... You're doing it better, is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm doing it better. Okay. That's fair. Uh, I have Slushy here on the left, so I, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. Okay. You are you doing the, I've got the movie poster up. still? Okay. So I decided to draw all the movie posters because I'm an idiot. But cool. Uh, Start of the timer. I I more or less just traced the actual movie posters. Anyway, movie ten is Millennium Actors. Um, Satoshi Kon is one of the greatest directors of all time. Um. He, like, the shit he pulls in his movies is ridiculous. The way he, you know, does uh, cuts and transitions and shit is next level. It's, like, even for animation. And it's it's nuts. This is a movie about two dudes who are, who have tracked down this prolific actress from, like, the 60s through the 80s. Um, to interview her about her life. And they, like, travel with her through her movies as she's telling the stories. So, like, you see all the characters there. Those are, like, all the different characters she played in her movies. So, you know, I don't... It's, it's hard to explain the whole premise without just going off on this five-minute timer that I'm now incredibly anxious about. But um, you're, you're good. <laughs> you have three and a half minutes. All right. I just think, like, I know Mortis. Mortis, you haven't seen this, correct? That's right. Okay. And Count, have you seen it? No, I have not. Okay. I want to ask because uh, we're going to be talking about Stoshikon again. How many Stoshikon movies have the two of you seen? This is the, the f- four. Essentially, this is the perfect blue and. Tokyo Godfather's guy, right? Correct. I have two. Then. So I've you've seen... seen Paprika and which one? Did I? I didn't say Paprika. <laughs> that's my assumption. Paprika is the other one I haven't like seen. One... I've seen Perfect oh, okay. Blue and I've seen Tokyo Godfather's. He showed me Tokyo okay. Godfather's. I've seen Perfect oh, Blue and I've seen Paprika. Okay. At some point, I'm going to make us do an episode on Stoshiko and we're going to watch all four of his movies. Um, and maybe the episode of the JoJo OVA that he directed, which is also very good. Um, but the nineties, yeah. He directed I didn't, I didn't one episode. That had different, and, different directors, huh? Yeah, he directed one episode, and you can tell it's him because it's the time when Dio is like in the cab with the mayor of Cairo. Yeah, and yeah. the mayor like runs out the one side and then runs back in the other. Yeah. That is, that is Satoshi Kone front and back, side to side. He does shit like that all the time. It always looks fucking amazing. There's a shot in this movie where someone throws a bag at someone else 
and it like hits them in the face and then suddenly it's the 1800s because they end up in a period piece it's so fucking good his movies are fucking mind-blowing and i i will never shut up about them. i know people who are way smarter than me uh who are way cooler than me as well have written a million things and made a million video essays on Satoshi Kon, but I Not cannot say enough. I know. I just, I cannot say enough about this dude and his movies. And I think everybody needs to watch every single one of them. Um, they would all four be in my top 10. Uh, but there are some other, uh, shit that <laughs> I may get flack for, for being in a top 10, but that's just who I am. I'm they are to all find out. 20. Well, you can't say you like anything without somebody telling you it's bad. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> so, okay, are you done? All right, we got it. We got. I will cede the remainder of my time. We've got a, a minute left. I agree with you about Linda Actress. I mean, it was released in two thousand one, so that's fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is that You'll supposed to out. be? You'll find out why. Uh, okay. It did come out at the turn of the millennium. You're right. No, I do. I, like I, I, I see what you're saying now with the transitions, and I, I do. I remember that scene. Um, yeah, Tokyo Godfather's good. Um, Perfect Blue, good. Sure. I'll, I'll have to see this. Okay, you will. I didn't like Paprika as much, but I did like Perfect Blue a lot. The Perfect Blue. Uh, people may know as the movie that. Whoever made that one other movie stole a shot from. <laughs> Don't know What's what that that's about. Requiem for a Dream. Oh, the really? The bathtub shot in Requiem uh, from a Dream is is stolen from the. I've from probably I've probably heard that at some point. Perfect Blue. Yeah. Hollywood is always stealing from anime. You only have to look to uh, Kimba the White Lion to understand <laughs> that. <laughs> that's uh, right. Castle of Cagliostro. <laughs> We'll talk about that. So here's my number 10. Uh, Dr. Strangelove. I use the Australian poster here because it's more visually cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I didn't really prepare anything, but uh, I, this movie is very funny. I constantly think about every line from it every day. Uh, Peter Sellers is incredible. George C. Scott is incredible. I think I like George C. Scott more, but uh, just characters and situations that I love and laugh about. And, you know, what is, what is life if not that? But I don't, I, I don't I, like Dr. Strange's love. <laughs> fuck you, but... <laughs> uh, but I have a Kubrick in my top ten, so, you know, shared directors is... You know, there's a kinship there. Yeah. <laughs> I took his Kubrick out of my top 100 because of you. But no, don't do that. No, I think you're right. I don't know. Uh, we're talking about Clockwork Orange, <laughs> which I haven't honestly <laughs> seen since high school. And thinking about it, like, yeah, maybe it's not. But um, no, Look, I, I understand the appeal of them. I just some of his I don't enjoy and strange. I don't. One of I don't think this feels that much like a Kubrick movie. Like this feels like, you know, there's nothing really. It's got good shots and stuff, but it's like it's not like heart shaking or anything like right. all his movies are supposed to be. Right. I'll say I'm doing a comedy. It's just yeah. It's just a good nuclear comedy. Um, now I don't hate it when, when I say I don't like something most of the time it's not like like okay I, I don't like Back to the Future it doesn't mean I hate it I just don't understand why people love it so fucking much but if it's on I would watch it yeah so I wouldn't turn off Doctor Strangelove I'm not gonna gush about it like Mortis here <laughs> you, you wouldn't kick Doctor Strangelove out of bed for eating crackers right or maybe you would the crackers might be the line I don't know. I saw this. Uh, you know, I saw like the last ten minutes of this on TV when I was like nine. I was like, "What? What the fuck was that?" And I, my dad tried to explain it to me, and I don't know. I probably didn't see the whole thing until I was sixteen, 
and like renting movies, but a couple uh, years I don't ago, think I saw it, it until high, like late high school or early college. I was old. I've never seen it. A couple years ago at my college, a non-traditional student, uh, <laughs> the they the like art division or something like put on a showing and this like they made this little fake room like the nuclear cafe like it was like a quarter a quarter of like a fake diner and then like a a quarter of like a sandy uh, airstream like next to and a projector i don't i think this is the only thing they played they should have played them (laughs) you know they should have played more than this but Celestia, you should watch this, though. And I'd be willing to watch it again if we, the three of us, want to watch it sometime. I would love to watch uh, every one of the movies that are in everyone's top ten, probably. I'm realizing I haven't seen any Stanley Kubrick movie all the way through. The only one I've seen at all is, like, half of Full Metal Jacket. Which half? Well, the first half. Okay, that's probably the one to say. I don't yeah, like I've that seen one up until much. <laughs> I've seen up until the bathroom scene, and I don't think I've seen anything past that. I think at the time I was watching it, I was like at a friend's house, and it, his dad and I and my friend were watching it, and then we got to the bathroom scene, and then he decided to turn it off. So. I just That's never, all you got. I just never went yeah. back and watched it. I'm done watching this. Is the game? I on? mean, there was probably a reason, you know, two ten year olds in the sure in the room with him. Yeah, maybe realized after all the swearing that a suicide wouldn't be the thing that they needed to see. Who knows? Well, count. Where's your ten? I accidentally okay. just deleted your ten. Okay, I found it. <laughs> I found it. Okay. All right. Good. There it Oof. is. I know this movie. Mortis, Mortis always deleting. Yeah, That's that is true, the American man. astronaut. But first, I'll explain what I'm what I'm doing here. I'm doing top ten release order descending. Um, I have various tastes that differ from day to day. So these are the films I'd like to send into space as representing their respective genres. Okay, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay. Uh, some of these are would be in my legit top ten, and some of them are just kind of just like chosen. Is this your? Are we? Really. Is this capsule for you, or is this like for humanity? For humanity, okay. I think so. So, the American Astronaut is a space western musical from two thousand one. So there hasn't been a good movie in twenty two years. <laughs> okay. So, it was. Different. Have you seen Jupiter Ascending? I have. I've seen it a few months ago. It's not... <laughs> anyway, not the American Astronaut yourself. is directed by Corey McAbee, kind of a localish guy in New York, Philly area, and it's about a space trucker named Samuel Curtis. He's flying around a 1930s looking train. It's extremely low budget, but also very believable. Um, the whole idea is that as if the industrial era never stopped and just went straight into space. And I first saw it in college. I proceeded to show it to anyone who'd be willing to watch it. I don't really like musicals, but I like this because like the songs are pretty organic. It'll be a song on the radio or that they're just kind of like performing for other people. Yeah. Uh, it's also representing my Western character, Gory, because if I didn't get that out of the way, I'd have like the whole list filled with fucking like spaghetti westerns. So it's just one to represent three different things like sci fi, westerns, and musicals all in one. That's my number 10, The American Astronaut. Any questions, Slushy? Um, this screenshot looks like someone hanging out with a bad Flash Gordon cosplay. Kind of is. That's not a question, but, um, <laughs> I don't know. That's that sounds like cool. Swear. Like, I, despite our disagreements on what movies are good and worth seeing, I do respect your opinions a lot. Um, oh, I respect yours too, so, Slushy. Well, I appreciate that. I would definitely watch this movie. I've never Morris even has seen it most of it, I think. 
I would say like ninety percent. Yeah. Yeah. I should never even heard of it before. I didn't know it existed. So it's it's cool to be introduced to new things. Well, I don't even know how I found it, and I have that written down because for some of these, I have written how I discovered her when I first saw it. I first saw it in college, but I don't really even know how I found it. I did enjoy did it. You go, I love it. Did you go to a college that had a film course? Did you have a friend in a film course? No, it was me that found it as far as like found it online for some oh, reason. No. I'm just like, that's me. Right. I did have many film course friends. However, this one was a discovery of my own. I I don't like musicals. I agree about uh, what you said about organic. Like I don't I didn't really this didn't feel like a musical. It felt like a movie that had music in it. <laughs> right. I'm only warning people who like absolutely hate them. Right. Or, oh my god, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> yeah, it's fairly organic. Okay. What's good. the term for that? The term there's there's a term for that. Well, you call it diegetic music, but it's not yeah, exactly. I think that's what you're looking for, but yeah. right when it's on the radio or through yeah. the TV or loudspeaker, whatever the fuck. I did take a film course <laughs> in college. <laughs> I took film noir. Wow, they had a class on that. Yeah, that's cool. They showed Dark City. I hate that movie. Oh my god. Is that in your top 10? Please, no. No. Okay. Not even in my top 100, but I do. I think it's fine. Slushy, nine. Never seen it. I really want to see it. Um, So, this is the movie that every movie sense has taken from, at least in some aspect. Uh, You think so? I don't have. Well, I mean, you're the one that always says it. I don't know how serious you are. <laughs> Anytime there's like a clock tower scene in anything, I just say Castle of Cagliostro <laughs> or like a castle by a lake or something. It's just a bit. Go on. Um, I don't know how much I have to say about it, mainly because I, I know because I know Mortis that it's going to come up soon in his list. Um, and I'm sure he has many more smarter things to say. I know it's not a contest. I don't. Don't ever sell me. <laughs> I saw this movie for the first time uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, when my partner and I decided to just try and go through most of the Ghibli catalog. Uh, we didn't go in any particular order, so this was like the, um, I don't know, like the third to last movie we watched. There's still a bunch more I haven't seen, but it's crazy that this movie came out when it did and its influence you can still see in basically anything you watch. It's incredibly cool. It made me want to get really into Lupin, but my understanding is that most if not all other Lupin material, it doesn't even hold a candle to this. Um, which doesn't surprise me, but I don't know. It's a really fucking cool movie, and I'd be surprised if anyone watching us hasn't seen it. So you haven't watched other Lupin stuff? No, I haven't seen any other Lupin stuff. There's Not even the shows? Nope. Like, there's stuff Slushy. I wanted to you should. check out, but that, <laughs> I know. Like, I know. I watched a I'm really into video essays because they're great to like put on to be like a thing you don't have to pay in full a attention A ton of Lupin's to. on Tubi, or at least it was. It's probably still there. I think, I mean, yeah, I think I, s- I series one and two is on there. You'll, you'll, you can't binge it. Like you can't watch 10 episodes in a row, but you should try and watch like one a day if you can manage that. Well, that's the thing. And, I, and I've said it. I don't, I probably said it on the podcast, but I have a really hard time like watching things I feel like I need, I feel like I need to pay attention to, um, by myself because I have real bad unmedicated ADHD diagnosed. Um, thanks for the (laughs) disclaimer. I know a lot of people like saying they have it. 
I right. believe them that they do because it's pretty obvious when you do, but I was diagnosed. So don't come for me. Um, and like, if I, if I'm watching something, I need to be doing something. Else. Okay. And even if it's well, like talking, Tom other Lupin's good too. This yeah, movie rules, I by the way. I, I want to watch it. Maybe you could binge the series because it's, you know, a little formulaic. <laughs> you <laughs> don't need to see every moment. Well, at least, true. At least, like, series one. I don't know. I just feel like it, it gets sickening, like Ultraman. That's what, like, if you watch too much Ultraman in a row. Yeah. I wouldn't say that, but okay. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> say that about Ultraman. <laughs> I'm so Ultraman. sick of this Ultraman. I gotta, <laughs> watch, like, gotta get out of the house. Can't watch more than like two episodes in a row. I get it. Oh, I love Ultraman. I would sit there if I if I have someone to watch it with me. I would sit. Well, there and slushy watch. binge Lupin. Then you have no. Go ahead, have fun. I need someone to do it with me. Just put it on the back. Yeah, That's what we're saying. Play Kadash in one window. Have Lupin in the other. Go for it. Maybe I'll try. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this. It's fucking good. Everybody's seen it. It's great. If you haven't, you should. You know, maybe not everybody's seen it, but I think it is on Tubi, maybe. I don't know. Is it? If it's not, I'm pretty sure. It comes and goes. So here's my number nine. That's The Crow. Uh, This is a poster I had when I was 16. (laughs) Cool. Hell yeah. Uh, I sort of rediscovered this movie the past couple years. Like, I loved it when it was new. I didn't see it in the theater, but you know, I rented it. Um, sort of like I don't know, going through a goth phase, I would say, which has lasted to this day. But um, I, I love heroes who are dead, <laughs> and as as a result, are like mostly yeah. invincible, but like also they aren't invincible. You know, I don't just something about. Crow, that Spawn, kind of shadow the man. ventral wraith <laughs> yes <laughs> the vengeful wraith i haven't seen the wraith should i see that i have not seen the wraith either i've seen the crow and it's great um i don't know i forgot yeah, about this movie for some reason for like 20 years and then i just watched it again not too long ago and i was like oh yeah this is really good this is still really good this wasn't just like a teenage thing uh, just very cool, very good, like action movie. Good, great soundtrack. It feels more. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's there's a lot of '90s movies that are like just an excuse to sell a CD. Maybe this right. was in some way that, but uh, it feels you know it feels right in the movie. Ernie Hudson again. in there. Uh, very. I don't know. Brandon Lee, we miss you. You were <laughs> Brandon Lee was really good. He was very good in this. He was very good in Showdown in Little Tokyo. Not fair. Haven't seen. Haven't seen his Hong Kong movie. I forget what it's called. But I haven't uh, seen Showdown in Little Tokyo. How's that? You haven't seen it? Oh god. No, I have not. Wow. I haven't seen it either. <laughs> so you have seen The Crow. Yes, Martis uh, did a showing of The Crow. How long ago now? Six uh, months, a year? Six months. What is time? Ish, yeah. Recently enough, it's number 16 on my list. It's really <laughs> fucking good. Can't rain all the time. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to Dudesy, Will Sasso. <laughs> <laughs> also a big yeah. fan of The Crow. But, Hell yeah. Uh, De Niro Crow. I don't know. Not... Not much else to say. Not a lot of, you know, Brandon Lee, like, ostensibly, like, a martial artist. He doesn't, I feel like he doesn't really punch and kick much in this. It's mostly, like, guns. Yeah. Good action. The villain looks like John Romero. Um, (laughs) Cool. Cool movie. Good to watch. Good to feel young and sad again, because... It's better than being old and sad. I don't, I don't know. Damn. You know? I gotta rewatch it. 
It's, it's probably been 20 years, but I remember really enjoying it as a child or a young teen. Uh, Count. What the hell is yes. this? Guy, that is, guy in a boiler room. It's a guy in a boiler room. It's a movie called Tomorrow. It is a played adaptation. It's a drama. It can be watched on Tubi right now. It was directed by Joseph Anthony, and it stars Robert Duvall doing like the Sling Blade voice, but like years before. So I can, I guess, I can read my what I've written about so, it. So, so two thousand one is the last time a good movie was made, and then this this was like yeah, what nineteen ninety or something. This is nineteen seventy two. Okay, Jesus, wow, big gap. Yeah, anyway. let me ask you something real quick, Count. Kind of- are these all black and white movies, or did you just apply a, <laughs> a thing to the screenshots you took? They're all black and white. <laughs> the aliens are going to think we don't have color on our planet, damn it. Well, I yeah, mean, well. It's, it's a big assume that um, the aliens can see color, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It true. is. I, I myself am colorblind, so. Maybe the that. aliens we find will also be dogs. I'm not black and white colorblind, just like really bad shade colorblind. <laughs> That'll be funny. I love black and white movies. I I realized I had done it unintentionally. I had filled out this top ten list with uh, eight of the ten, and they were all black and white. <laughs> I was like, I might as well find two more and just make the whole ten black and white. So tomorrow is a framed narrative type movie where it begins with a trial and ends with the the results of the trial. And the rest of it's just like about this guy here, Robert Duvall. His name is Fentry, and he's super poor. He lives in Mississippi. He goes to live and work on a farm, and he lives in a shed there. Eventually, this pregnant woman seen here is found around Christmas time on the run, and he takes her in, and then there's a huge fallout about it. But only within the context pretty much of this boiler room, and and it's just a big, really good drama. I found it from a band called Granddaddy. They have a song called French Fentry, which is the name of Robert Duvall's character, and features like sound bites from the movie. That's a good way to discover a movie. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I do. I love that too. When you love a song, I, I listened to the song for years and was like, "What the fuck is this? What is this?" And I eventually Googled it, and then I decided to watch the movie. And it's really good because he's like poor, and. The, the point of the trial is that someone who's like a low caste member of society is put on trial. And I don't know. It, I, I find it very relatable. Just all of it. I really like it. All right. Yeah. I've never heard of it in my life. <laughs> Watch it's on Tubi. Many things. You've heard of Robert Duvall, I'm sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, God, I've heard it's familiar but like what what's another thing that he's he's in the 80s he was like a famous old handsome guy right <laughs> right well he did sling blade he was the dad on that there's all that i never saw sling blade the only thing i really know about sling blade is like uh fox they're not fox uh like mad tv <laughs> skits and shit have you seen like apocalypse now or secondhand lions i've seen apocalypse now he's in that apocalypse now is the the one Vietnam movie, right? It is, is a Vietnam, Vietnam movie, movie yeah. yes. It's not the I mean, one. It's, there's it's like there's, the uh, there's a, probably movie. a thousand of them. Man, that movie fucking sucks. <laughs> you don't like Apocalypse now? Wow. I watched whatever version that had an extra five hours of footage. Well, there you go. Which I there's feel was problem. a mistake. Yeah. But god damn, that movie was boring and shitty and dumb. I think the normal version's a little boring. <laughs> But. I wouldn't be surprised if I found that to be the case too. I don't know. Like uh, I last like watched it in college, it didn't wow me, but I didn't hate it. It's one of those things like Strange Love. You watch it and I'm like, okay. I don't know. Like, that okay. whole movie is like Vietnam bad. It's like, yeah, I know, motherfucker. Yeah, Vietnam <laughs> bad. So there's like, more to it than there's Kurtz and that whole thing, and then it's you know, it's like literary. It's like uh, Heart of Darkness, and you know all that smart shit. Our darkness was so fucking boring, dude. <laughs> I like Platoon. You like Platoon? 
I haven't seen Platoon. Platoon's okay. I don't know. I like it more it's, than it's Apocalypse got, Now. It's got a very good cast. It's not in my top 10 or 100, but you know. Yeah. Platoon did get an NES game. It's probably better than Apocalypse Now. Fantastic. <laughs> Apocalypse Now on NES from LJN. What if that happened? Little little thought experiment. Oh, it's so um, cause LGN they only made bad games. Uh count LGN was a publisher, not a developer. Oh, okay. I don't know anything about video games, now. are you kidding me? Slushy. Rumble in the motherfucking Bronx. <laughs> Let me tell you about Jackie Chan. <laughs> it's a beautiful illustration. Thank you. Really good. People love Jackie Chan. I think that's just kind of generally accepted that his movies are good. Um, he has a lot of. It good is now movies. because of this movie, probably. <laughs> <laughs> when I and this this may just be because I I don't talk to many people and the places I hang out are generally fairly small, but when I hear people talk about Jackie Chan movies, it's always like. Drunken Master 2, and I don't know, that's really it. Which, like, that's a fucking fantastic movie, too. But I've heard recently people saying that Rumble in the Bronx is, like, bad. And I don't get it. Really? Yeah. Who are these people? I don't get it at all. Because, like, this movie is incredibly fucking funny. The action is maybe some of the best I've seen in an action movie, period. The sets are fucking over the top and amazing. Like, j- just the fight in the fucking punk hangout yeah. is, like, it's, uh, it's crazy that they managed to do that at all. And like seeing Jackie Chan do like Chinese spear shit with a fucking ski is amazing. <laughs> he I did like it. I want to see it though. Oh man, you got to see good. it. I one of the very rare times that I managed to watch a movie by myself was two nights ago because I realized it's been a long time since I've seen Rumble in the Bronx. I want to make sure I have shit to say about it. So I, I just watched it and it was like, I don't know. I felt like a fucking kid again. (laughs) This movie is so fucking good. I don't have specific things to say about shit half the time yeah, because I'm not very smart, but I don't know. Watching Jackie Chan, like be a silly goofball, like flexing into the mirror while the one lady's laughing at him. And then, you know, the one way mirror. And then. You know, just the whole shit with the motorcycle game. Oh, I remember that. And how, Sorry. yeah, and the, and how the whole movie is like, you can tell everybody is like, it was filmed in Canada and you can tell everybody is speaking English, but they still dub the entire movie. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's really fucking good. It's just the perfect level of corny, but then also the perfect level of, you know, very serious there were parts in it that made me fucking cry and it might be because I was really high, but also (laughs) (laughs) like the relationship between the little kid and his sister. I don't know, man. I don't, it's um, so fucking good. I don't super remember. Like I haven't seen this since VHS, but I did see it in the theater and I remember like, I I feel like when did this come out? Like 90, in America, 94 around there. I, um, I remember like before this came 95. out, um, in, like 95, uh, like Jackie Chan's action Kung Fu came out on Nintendo. And I was like, who, who the fuck is Jackie Chan? <laughs> what, is, what, who is this guy that I'm supposed to like know about? <laughs> and I did, you know, sometimes you would hear like people talk about, Oh, Jack, you know, Jackie Chan. Great martial arts like i had never seen a jackie chan movie and then this came out in the theater and like rightly so like sparked a big wave i think you know a ton of his other movies came out and i don't i don't understand i i'd be interested to hear these people saying this sucks (laughs) like maybe some of the 
other movies that came out in the wake of this, like some of the police stories are pretty slow and maybe, I don't know, maybe super cop. Isn't that great? I don't remember, but like, I think it was, this is, I remember this being great. Yeah. I revelatory. The people who I was seeing saying it sucked were like, again, it was a video essay. I don't remember who, but they were, Stop watching these videos. <laughs> the fuck I don't do have they to pay know? attention to most of what it do they know? when I watch it. But like they were talking about how they were just talking about like the history of martial arts movies essentially. Yeah. And like Shaw Brothers films and all that stuff. And I think they just were really into you know the exploitation cinema era yeah. of martial arts movies, which I get. Those are also really fucking good. I have watched but, over 400 uh, Kung Fu and Wuxia movies in the past year alone. <laughs> that kind of yeah, guy. That, that exact Rumble kind of the, guy, yeah. Rumble in the Bronx explained. <laughs> draw, Rumble draw, in little, the Bronx draw a little like arrow pointing at Jackie <laughs> Chan with a question mark. <laughs> what was the first Jackie it. Chan movie you saw, Count? Are you asking both of us? Count. Well, you. Oh, me? I'm going to have to look at his list. Probably like fucking oh, Rush Hour or some shit. I don't know. That was oh, yeah, also Rush the first one I saw. Eh, we're at five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Rush Hour and Shanghai Nights. Probably Rush Hour. Yeah. From the in- <laughs> this list is too small. I've really fucked up. Okay, there's that. All right. So... Me aid. What is me aid? Well, there we go. Uh, it's Castle of Cagliostro. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she already it? talked about this. Uh, it rules. It what are your rules. experiences with it, Mortis? Well, I when did I see this? I I saw the streamlined dub of this where they never call him Lupin; they call him Wolf. Um, like I rented this. I was probably 15. That sounds fucking awesome. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was like legal reasons or what, but I don't, I don't think it says Lupin anywhere on that. Like the movie is just called Castle of Cagliostro and all, all anyone calls him is Wolf, but he's just Wolf in America. I want to see that version. Um, I think it, I think I have that audio. On my copy of this, but cool. I'm gonna. T- <laughs> I'll probably talk about this again later. I don't want to get into it now. Anyway, I'll get into it later. Um, I don't know. No, it's it's an incredible action movie. It's beautifully animated. It's paced like a motherfucker. To borrow a term from Slushy, um, <laughs> it's just an adventure like no other and like maybe the only thing wrong with it from a global perspective is like it's not that good of a lupin movie because <laughs> like really he doesn't act like lupin in the you know he's very like right. chivalrous in this and he's very chaste he's not as scummy yeah like it's he's even towards Fujiko, he just kind of like makes some small moves. <laughs> like Fujiko is very all the character. It's I mean, it's you know Miyazaki directing, right? And it's like, in spite of what anyone may have to say about the way he acts <laughs> behind the scenes, he's like a very wholesome director in most ways. But like, it's it's just. It's, you know, Lupin doesn't act like Lupin, but he is a cool hero, and it's a great adventure. And like, I, like we said, every time, <laughs> every time there's like a clock tower in anything, every time there's a castle by a lake, every time a lake drains and there's something under it, I, I will just say Castle of Cagliostro. <laughs> um, I don't... And if you've ever read any book about anime from the 90s, which I've read a few. Um, you you know that this 
is supposedly Steven Spielberg's favorite movie. Really? Or, or was at one time. Um, I would believe that. I always, <laughs> I always like to picture like Steven Spielberg at some like Hollywood party with a little like eight millimeter projector, just like showing someone this in a back room. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't really feel like this particularly has influenced like American cinema that much, but it's Japanese media. It's like insane. Like Castlevania is a hundred percent this. Absolutely. Um, so much, so much of video games is, <laughs> is Castle of Cagliostro. Um, it's it's great. I love it. You know, you're right. There are a lot of video games where you drain a lake and there's something under it. Anytime there's a, a weird lot of looking castle. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime there's like God, what did we watch recently that basically had the the ninja attack night scene escape <laughs> like lifted directly? <laughs> it wasn't I don't can't remember what it was, but I think it was I don't remember if it was animated or not. I don't know. Would it have been Cuz I think the only animated stuff we we watched together recently was on my anime night. So maybe oh, it was mm. Dark Stalkers or Dragon Slayer or the other one. I don't think it would have been in I don't know Neo Tokyo. Right. Right, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I gotta get back to doing Great. that. Wolf, wolf, wolf. That's a good name for him, I think. Can't we're like, know. we're like Jigen and I know Goemon what this is. Still, well, yeah, because they're not like. I mean, the the issue is like Lupin is probably copyrighted in some way, right? If not just by the French or. <laughs> Whatever. Right. The Arsene Lupin. This is Night of Living Dead, 1968. You can find it anywhere on the internet, but it is on Tubi. Directed by George A. Romero. Have you seen this slushy? Uh no. Okay. Well, it's pretty much the first flesh eating zombie movie. There were voodoo zombie movies that were made before this, but this is like the first idea of like the dead come back to eat the living. Um, it's about the hell is full. The dead will walk the earth or whatever. That's yeah, this movie, right? they said that in the sequel. Oh, okay. But this is the first one where a group of confused strangers take refuge in an old farmhouse to escape the endless horde of the dead, trying to devour them for reasons unknown. Uh, I first watched this in eighth grade because a classmate knew I loved Resident Evil, and he told me that Walmart was selling Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> For a buck on DVD and go buy it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I was like, I, I got to go get it. I, I recall seeing my grandmother later that day. And she's like, do you want to go to the store? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'll go to Walmart and get Night of Living Dead on DVD while we're out. And so I watched it and I enjoyed it. And then about two years later, I would watch it every fucking day in 10th grade after school. <laughs> I would just come home. I would put it on. And I fucking love this movie. It represents my horror genre. Because if not, the whole list would be uh, horror. I could do a top ten of just horror. Because I love horror so goddamn much. Uh, Romero, I have it listed here. He, like Raimi, they were the guys who did it. They, They were fairly young. Raimi was much younger. But he and Romero both went out. Group of locals, group of friends, and they made a fucking horror movie, and it changed the world, both of them. I think Evil Dead and Night of Living Dead both changed film and culture as we know it. Also, it represents my Romero slot, because I love Romero movies in general, and Romero movies I could recommend is Night Riders, which is a movie I think Slushy and Mortis would both like. I, Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. I would like to. It's about Slushy, if you don't know, it's about like a group of people takes place in 1981, and it's from 1981. So, you know, it's contemporary for its time. But it's about people who dress up as knights and live as knights. And instead of riding around on horses, they ride motorcycles and they joust on motorcycles. That sounds it's cool fun. as fuck. Yeah, it's amazing. And it has Ed Harris in his first lead role. And it's fucking really, really good. 
Are they doing it like for fun? Or they're doing it like as a traveling act. Okay. I assumed from the poster that it was like some kind of Mad Max situation, but no, no, the rest of the world's perfectly fine. They all think (laughs) that they're weirdos. And the, like the King Ed Harris, like lives it like his kayfabe is his whole life. And it's fucking great. Um, I've seen not a living dead. Probably. I don't know. It's hard not to see this movie because it's public domain, right? And it has it's always in movies. It? Yeah. Oh, it's always on the T. It's the movie that's always on TV. Yeah, in that's like a horror that's, movie. Yeah, that's why it's in every movie because it's free, and that's why Count was able to get it for a dollar on DVD, probably because like right. they didn't have to pay fees; they just pressed the DVD. Um, hmm. but it's yeah, it's good. I don't yeah. My my favorite of the Romero zombie movies is Day. Oh, Day is also my favorite. I just didn't have it on DVD in high school. Right. <laughs> is Day the mall one? That's, no, Dawn. that's Dawn. Dawn. Okay. Day is the I've um, seen Dawn. Day is the army base one. Underground. Yes. I've seen Dawn. I haven't seen Day. Hmm. And I haven't seen Night. You haven't, haven't seen, seen Night. No, I haven't. You haven't seen what? Dusk? Is uh, that Dusk? One? I was just making. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be... I mean, Romero's still (laughs) out there doing it. I wouldn't be too surprised. Romero's dead. Oh, is he? Yeah. When did that happen? (laughs) When did that happen? Years. I think like 2018 or something. Oh, well, that's not that long. But, okay. I'm looking it up. Um, He's a zombie making movies. That would be fitting. He died 2017. Uh, it's over half a decade ago. What was that one about, like the kids making the movie? Was that like his last zombie movie? Like, de- like, the movie. Trial, oh, yeah, like the Trail fucking... of the Dead or Di- yeah, yeah, Diary were... of the Dead or something? There was Diary of the Dead. I didn't like that much. Or Survival of the Dead, both terrible. Land of the Dead, bad too. That's the one where Dennis Hopper's like the mayor of Las Vegas or something. Yes, the king of Las Vegas. <laughs> Haven't seen that one. Romero has a lot of misses, but his goods are goods. Yeah. Night of the Living Dead, Dawn, Day, Creep Show, Night Riders, Martin. Oh, I forgot he did Creep Show. I haven't seen Martin. Martin's a weird one, but it's good. I think I think Skinny Puppy might sample Martin a time or two. I'm not sure. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's one of my favorite bands, uh industrial okay. band. They uh they are constantly having Samples from horror movies in their songs. Which is how I saw a lot of horror movies is <laughs> looking up. That makes sense then. Yeah. Like me and tomorrow. Yeah. I, I, I just want to know it again. I think it's funny that not in a, uh, a poo poo on you, Mortis, that you thought George Romero is alive, but like in the sense of like, oh, he's still out there. <laughs> I, just, I had to break the news that he's dead. Well, he's just, yeah, it just seemed like every few years some fucking like Romero versus zombie yeah. thing comes out and it's like never good. I just assumed. Right. <laughs> I just assumed he was still churning him out. It's great. Uh, Any puppy Bill's Pentagon for using its music at Gitmo. Oh, yeah, that was a- interesting. And I have to listen to them. I'm not sure if that was ever like confirmed as real, but apparently they were using Skinny Puppy to torture people at Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Slushy, number seven. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be right back real quick. Go ahead. All right. So before I start, I want to ask, Count, have you seen this movie? Yes, many times. And what is your appear? What is your opinion of it? Just like generally uh, good, generally bad. How do you? Like it? The Super Mario's live action movie with John Leguizamo as Luigi and what Bob Hoskins as Mario. Correct. Great movie. Hilarious. Yeah, comedy. it is. Fantastic Holy adaptation shit. of the source material. I love this movie. I was so worried that you were gonna hate it. Um. Mario Brothers is one of the few movies I remember seeing as a kid. 
and um i just it was one of those things where it's like i remember seeing it as a kid i knew when i was a kid i loved it and then the internet happened and you know they just regurgitated the same bullshit critics were talking about at the time about how it's such a dog shit movie and it makes no sense blah 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 and so for a long time i grew up thinking damn what a bad movie I, I must have hated it as a kid because of course I would. I'm, I'm a smart person. I, I hate things that are bad. And then I watched it again for the first time five years ago, I want to say. And I don't understand why people don't like this movie. Like legitimately. I, I know I sometimes say that kind of thing as a joke about, about shit that is just good. And like, I understand why they don't like it because it's not like it doesn't fill in the fucking syllabus or whatever you want to call it criteria (laughs) of what makes a good movie. But it's like this one does. And I don't understand why people don't like it. I don't understand how it got a bad reputation. I don't fucking get what Bob Hoskins issue is saying. It's a shit movie. I understand that it probably was a fucking mess on the um you know during production and after watching that recent like that recent thing where they spliced in all the extra footage that was found i understand why the directors were locked out of the editing room because that (laughs) that other version dog shit that's like on archive yeah it's on archive that it adds so many it like it it has a technical issue where they take like a scene that was filmed from two different perspectives and put both perspectives into the movie one after the other. So you watch the same scene twice mm. and it's just like, why is this how you decided to edit this? What the fuck is wrong with fans? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, even, if, even if you ignore the duplicate part of those scenes, the scenes just didn't need to be there. So that sounds they're like either, people don't understand what takes are and they think they're right exactly <laughs> and they and they don't understand why shit is edited out of movies like maybe people don't really appreciate the job of an editor especially after after you know the shit with blade runner which was understandable and like how that spawned the whole director's cut thing and it's like now movie fans are like oh the director should be the end all be all they're the one making the movie the studio is fucking fucking up all these movies the studio is making it bad here's a version of apocalypse now that's 23 hours long <laughs> it's the best movie in the world uh, George <laughs> you know, Lucas's it's, it's like... editing saved a new hope okay <laughs> yeah no editors are very important yeah yeah and it's like this movie is so fucking good it's I'll I'll be saying these same talking points about another maligned, often maligned movie that is going to come up later in my top ten, but it's got impeccable comedic timing. The acting is off the fucking charts. It is intentionally corny. It is high camp. It's fucking good. It is just good, and it yeah. does not deserve the reputation that it has. Uh, I and I'm say, pissed though, off about it. I <laughs> my buddy turned thirty a few years ago, and only one to do was watch this like. He, he streams movies outside during the summer, big projected mm. screen. Oh, cool. So we did that, and there was probably about 10 of us, and only he and I enjoyed this. Everyone else thought it was terrible, and he and I were laughing the whole time. We loved it. So I don't know. Maybe just people don't like it. I think, I, I I think it's it. a big ask for people to get over that it's not a quote-unquote good Mario movie. Like, I think that's... I think that's right, but it's at like, the time... And even now, it's like... They prefer Doki 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 do it! Right. <laughs> <laughs> the great mission to rescue Princess Peach. Um, no, yeah. I, I don't like this as much as I like Double Dragon, but I think, I think Double Dragon is almost exactly the same situation. Yeah, this, for sure. Where it's like, I should rewatch Double Dragon then. Double Dragon is great. <laughs> it's not... It's not a good movie of the video game, but it's a really good movie. And both both movies like have this big warehouse scene that like I feel like it's obviously not the same warehouse, but like 
in my mind they're the same warehouse like the the hideout right. of the punks in double dragon and like you know the entire fucking dinosaur city set in this <laughs> like if like if you turn the camera it's like the i feel like you could see the double dragon set um have you seen the hats off entertainment video on this slushy i haven't i haven't seen any hats off entertainment stuff. Oh, it's, he's a good generally good youtuber didn't like the rob zombie monsters but other than that <laughs> i don't know how someone could dislike the rob zombie monsters you all talking about that's rob a, zombie's a, monsters i never know if you're serious or not i'm very serious that movie is awesome <laughs> it's like fine okay i don't know i love camp i love i love camp i like camp too but the rob I think zombie's it's trailer looked really bad the trailer was not great. Well, but I think the trailer was scenes from the film. But right, <laughs> think... right. But I mean, like, I don't think the trailer. It's, it's a, it's the kind of movie, or it's a kind of movie where I don't think a trailer can be good. Is it appropriate for children? I would say so. I don't see why not. Right. I may am watching it at some point then to like show it to, you know, family members. Maybe that'll be the way I get into it. Okay, we're I, think, like, I think Mario is good. I I don't think I hope the new Mario is good, but I if if even if it is, I think people are going to be like that. Still hasn't come to streaming. Yeah. No, I feel like people are like damn. Out in theaters, they finally for like a made year. a good Marvi- Mario. <laughs> Not that long, <laughs> like, a month. like a month. Okay. Evil Dead Rise, though, available now on video on demand. How did that come out? Yes. Not looking forward to it personally. Yeah, I know. My number seven is Ghostbusters. Cool. Uh, what do you what do you even say about Ghostbusters? Should have Winston on the poster. They recently hacked Winston into the Genesis Ghostbusters. <laughs> I was pleased That's to cool. see. Uh, I don't know. I think it's uh Again, it's a great comedy. I don't probably not like a lot of comedies in my top 100, but a handful. I I feel like this is, you know, Dan Aykroyd is one of my favorite humans in as much as you can like really (laughs) feel that way about a celebrity, right? (laughs) Yeah. Just as like a character in the world. Uh, he's great, and I feel like you know, knowing knowing his beliefs and the way he is now, like you can yeah, to see. To him, it's a documentary. To him, it's a documentary. Yeah, like so this, the ghost aspect of this is like so earnest, and it's like that's just what that's him. <laughs> that's just his love for ghosts coming through, and like the special effects are great and the the world they set up and the system is par excellence i don't know uh great writing great characters you know some people are gonna in 2023 (laughs) say that bankman is a sex pest so that makes this a bad movie (laughs) i don't you know you don't have to relate with or agree with the protagonists of the films always <laughs> that's fine i think it's a great movie it's ghostbusters it's ghostbusters uh it's a shame seen they never the made a sequel. yeah uh, i i remember seeing ghostbusters 2 in the theater and it you know it was an early experience with disappointment and <laughs> <Yeah>. confusion <laughs> like i don't hate it I think there's some great stuff in it. Like the Scalari brothers scene is great. Uh, the train is great. The big Godzilla ghost is great. Just it's more like there's good shots in Ghostbusters too. Um, but Ghostbusters one, just start to finish funny, cool, wild, original. My only, my only beef with Ghostbusters, look, I love Ghostbusters. Okay? Deserves to be in anyone's top ten. My only problem with it 
is like this and hocus pocus when you go to like a halloween party and it's like let's put on a horror movie <laughs> they put on ghostbusters or hocus pocus and i want to fucking hang myself <laughs> yeah uh, that's that's my only kind of beef with it probably it's less like, a real fucking horror movie less of a Tell horror me. movie than uh puppet master four <laughs> for sure yeah um Shit, we mentioned Probably it. less of a horror movie than Puppet Master 3. Especially as adults. Like, put on, put on a fucking horror movie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of good horror movies that aren't scary. But sure. horror movies. Yeah. But have either of you totally been in that situation? <laughs> I don't go to parties, Count. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best to avoid them. Okay. Um... I can imagine we, it, though. Every troop needs to have an outgoing person, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the de facto leader. Have you, I've never heard you say anything about Ghostbusters. Unless you, have you you've seen this? Right? Yeah, I've seen Ghostbusters. I do like it. Um, there was a while where we had, like from Walmart or some shit, a double pack of Ghostbusters where the, the case was like oh, all yeah, yeah. green slime. I know it. Yeah, um, and I ended up watching both movies multiple times in that year. I do like it a lot. I tend not to talk about it um, because, as you maybe heard from my rant about Super Mario Brothers, is that my anger about other people's opinions <laughs> tends to cloud my own opinions. Um, I think people care way too much about getting sequels to the things that they liked as a kid oh for sure and have developed entire identities around enjoying movies from the 80s and being very mad about women Uh, (laughs) what (laughs) (laughs) well with ghostbusters in particular there's some clear crossover. Oh, right. Uh, God, I forgot that two. even existed, honestly. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. whole woman version. I haven't seen it. I'm sure it's not a bad... I'm sure it, it could be either great or complete dog shit. I was sitting here like, haven't seen Afterlife, the one after two. Like, <laughs> I forgot the woman <laughs> one even existed. Can't live with them, can't shoot them. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure, I'm sure it's terrible because all like mid 2010s comedy suck dog shit horribly and i don't know i people like tim porcator have ruined my ability to think about things like star wars and ghostbusters shout outs to geek time the next generation uh <laughs> count your number seven don't recognize hell yes yeah. Requiem for a heavyweight i love this movie Adore this movie. I remember you talking about it. Uh, It's from 1962. It's a sports drama. It's directed by Ralph Nelson. Written by Rod Serling of Twilight Zone, you know? I know him. You know that guy? You heard of that guy, Slushy? I've heard of him. Okay. Do you watch much Twilight Zone? Not really. Okay. Mostly just because it's like, it wasn't... We only ever had basic cable, and I don't know any channels. Right. It, it, it just wasn't on the TV channels. Well, it has Anthony we Quinn, who's pictured here, and he's a boxer that they call Mountain, and he's past his prime. And he's trying to integrate into society, and he's like just really bad at it. And then he has this woman who's a caseworker helping him. But he also has his old manager, played by Jackie Gleason. You ever hear of him, Slushy? Mortis? Uh, I know Jackie him. Gleason. Okay. And he's the he's the boxing manager, and he's racking up a ton of gambling debts. That's fucking everything up for Mountain because he's trying to get the Mountain to like fight again and do things to help him out. So I found this movie because I'm, I'm a big Twilight Zone fan. Then I wanted to watch something that isn't a Rod or <laughs> that is Serling, but not supernatural. So I found how much this. of that is there? There's this and there's patterns, and they're both really really good. Muhammad Ali appears in the beginning of this movie and then haystacks calhoun who i really don't know appears at the end of this he is a wrestler he's, i know he's a wrestler but i don't really i don't know much about him <laughs> he's just really really fucking big but this movie 
I adore it. It hits close to home in a huge, huge way. Just like the idea of being the outsider and not really fitting in. And I just love it. I think it's really amazing. I feel like I should see this. It's very sad, but it's very, very good. I should, I'll stream it sometime for you. Cool. I, I don't know. I like, I don't, I don't think I've seen as much Twilight Zone as I would like in my life. I do think Rod Serling is great. But. Uh, I would also, Patterns is fucking, it would be my top 10 as well. That's why, like, I had to condense these. It would be your top 10 if you weren't doing a gimmick. Right. (laughs) I gotta condense, because I can't, you gotta understand, you gotta get a feel for the count. I like Serling stuff, you know? Yeah. Any thoughts, Slushy? Comments, Uh, concerns? Maybe an incredibly ignorant question, but is it better than Rocky as far as boxing movies go? I like it better than Rocky, but Rocky is amazing. Um, It's really hard because Rocky's also local, and Rocky's also like an Italian-American like myself, so it's hard. I'm not going to hate on Rocky. A question from the chat. How does it compare to Raging Bull? I like it more than Raging Bull, but I also don't really like Scorsese. Raging Bull's black and white too, isn't it? It is. Okay. Never seen Raging Bull. Me either. Not a big Martin Scorsese guy, which also, I was just saying, I like Rocky because he's an Italian-American, but I don't really like Scorsese movies. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Well, you can't. You can't take them all. You got to choose here and there. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it sounds good. I'd like to see it. I I like boxing in an emotional context. Big fan of Ashta Ashta no Joe, which translates literally to tomorrow's Joe. Uh, I don't know that. Is that anime bullshit? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) It's like it's like the boxing anime. Uh, Do you mean no Epo? Well, it's, it was before that. Okay, I know that one. There's not a lot of boxing in this, but it, he is a boxer. It's very sad. It's very good. I'm not. I don't want to say too much about it because there's like, because you you want to see it, so I'm not going to say much about yeah. it. Okay. I'll I'll see it. I'll see it sooner rather than later, maybe. Okay. I have a very slight worry that uh. As we go further in counts list and the movies get older, the chances, like the chance that I've seen is obviously completely out the window at this point, but the chance that Mortis has seen it also seems <laughs> regular, <laughs> fairly low. I took a class on film appreciation. I saw, I know Morris has I seen, saw On the Waterfront. What? Morris has seen my number one. I know that. The Wizard of Oz. Oh, no, that's not in black. Everyone loves the Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Of Oz. The only in Canada. Oh wow, slushy here. <laughs> Your next one. So I said I like. Camp. Do you want know what Ricky O the story of Ricky is? Count. Uh, I don't think so. Wait, have you really not Holy seen this? Holy shit! <laughs> have you ever watched a fucking? You don't watch fighting games, do you? You don't care about fighting games. You've never I watch. Seen I watch. There's this. There's these two people that I watch online. They do a show about fighting games called Versus Human oh, Mode. I watch that. that. Sound like real ass. Um, it's a pretty cool. I've said I like camp. Ricky O is anime bullshit. It is live action. It's based on an old ass manga. Um, it is incredibly low budget. It takes place in a prison. People explode. There's a meat grinder. It's incredibly gory. It's incredibly silly. It's it's like like if you've ever seen a Shaw Brothers film like the Eight Venoms or all you know the fucking crippled defenders and that kind of shit where it's like <laughs> a, a small troop Just of Venom martial art. <laughs> right. A small group of martial artists that are you know all have like like weirdly specific abilities and styles and then then you have Ricky who's just too strong for his own good and too kind-hearted for his own good it's a silly fucking movie 
I don't want to say too much about it because it's one of those things where it's like, if you start describing any scene, it's going to ruin the scene in my opinion. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I'm look like, I looked it up on Google just to see like the cast and whatnot. I have not seen this. We're, we're going, this to is like a soon Hong Kong movie, isn't it? Or Taiwan or yeah, something whatever. Like that. Um, we like those. Yeah. <laughs> You know Fist of the North Star, right, Count? Like, the general gist of it. Like, I I think the manga of this was basically uh, intended to be bootleg Fist of the North Star. Like, okay. off of that. And then the movie... The movie is, like, the first third of the manga. And then after the st- events of the movie happen, like... There's... <laughs> It just goes further and further off the rails and like Hitler gets involved and the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding uh, two ED 209s connected back to back. This sounds amazing (laughs) for their horses. And uh, like they're also the ABC warriors (laughs) from 2000 AD just like traced. It's I don't know. It's an incredible story, but the movie's really good. Yeah. I feel like I need to. Yeah, I want to see. I haven't. I haven't read the manga. I feel like I need to know. Like it's still, it's still relatively grounded and just like, it's insane, but it's still a pretty typical. (laughs) It's like martial arts, but super violent. Yeah. In the chunk of the movie. And like the budget was basically non-existent. It feels like, like, as far as Hollywood movies, I guess maybe it's just pretty in line with hong kong stuff but i don't know i think the effects like that there movie. are like fine well for the most part i'm thinking of, <laughs> maybe maybe the yeah. final battle not so much but yeah i, I just thought of that as i was <laughs> but like the <laughs> the gore looks fine and like it does the uh it does like the x-ray shot that they stole from street fighter which we still need to watch street mm-hmm. fighter the sunny cheapest well, street fighter not the oh okay. I was gonna not say. the slushy street fighter i've only seen street fighter 2 <laughs> what <laughs> oh the movie like like the sequel yeah, yeah, to that one yeah, yeah, you're talking yeah, yeah. about okay I, I thought don't they all have like subtitles or is it actually just called street fighter 2 it's probably a subtitle by like street the street one. fighters bloody revenge or some shit it's return of the street fighter okay yeah that's what i've seen no, this i haven't seen this in a while like this i don't know i don't know if this should be on my top 100 but i do like this movie. it's a good movie and like I know, Mortis has talked about gore a little bit, and damn, it's gory. I don't know how you feel about it, but I guess how I feel about you what said you like gore about gore. Yeah, I like gore. Right, I well, like gore. I don't like torture porn, but I like gore. Did you watch? Um, did you ever watch Daily Show? Like when it was still on Comedy Central, when it was John Stewart count? Yeah, I, I've seen Daily Show. Do you know the? He used to use the part from this where a guy claps the head in half, (laughs) it was like, it was like, and now our ironic shit of the day, our weird news clip of the day. And it would just show like the guy slapping the head in half and exploding. That's from this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Just like how people would post on like a big trouble in little China, the gif and the clip of like the guy exploding. Yeah. Um, before we move on, I just want to say we're, when we get to number five, just skip me. Skip you. Yes. Cause we'll talk about my number five when it comes up in your list more. Oh, you're looking at my list. Well, no, I know your list. I know. <laughs> I know what your number one is. Okay. It's my number five. We'll skip my number five. Oh, okay. Well, no, that makes sense for now. We'll get to my number six, yeah. which is Hard Boiled. Oh, man, this movie rules. What a fucking good movie. <laughs> I think that this is the best pure action movie that has ever been made. I think The Killer is like maybe a better film. There are action movies that I like more for me, but like... I think just as pure action movies go, this is the best one. Um, 
and this for me this was part of the um probably the, the like the wave of the Jackie Chan right like in the 90s there was this wave of like oh yeah Hong Kong movies are good <laughs> in America <laughs> like I remember which which then like culminated in the Matrix I think right but um I remember hearing about this you, you would just hear about this like on the internet and you would hear about this in like comic books or you know whatever like people were making references to it like the smarks <laughs> and like people were seeing this and then i got a a double double vhs set of this and the killer and it was you know i said it about jackie chan but it was just revelatory it's like wow there's there are and have been like really insanely good films <laughs> outside of hollywood um yeah it's just great creative how old were you and do you remember uh 16 i would have loved it to see it then i didn't see it until like probably 22 when did i want to say we picked up because we me and my friends went out of town to see blair witch <laughs> for some reason <laughs> uh and it's real we, it was the bigger the bigger but not the biggest town in kansas <laughs> so they had like a good Hastings, uh, but I think that's when I got the DVD. The the DVDs barely even existed. The VHSs. Um, so I, I think it was you know after seeing Blair Witch is when I got Killer and Hard Boiled. Just purely on like, I heard this is good, <laughs> but it is good. Uh, it's funny. You can see there's a baby. That's funny. That baby pees on him. Uh, oh, yeah. Babies are funny. Just great gun action, like and great, Chai Fat's great one of those, filmmaking. Like, Jackie Chan's types that you would you would hear whispers about back then. Yeah, and he the movie was so rules. good that like a decade and a half later, it got a video game sequel. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, I, I've been meaning to play that again. I've been meaning to play it for the first time. It's it's decent. It's not like great, but it's you know you, if you wanna if you wanna get on uh, X, Xbox Live and boost, help me boost the achievement where you have to win a thousand <laughs> deathmatch matches while playing as the John Woo skin. Then you know, we could take care of that. What is the uh, fucking name of that Stranglehold. game? Stranglehold. And that that was supposed to be like this whole thing. Like, I think John Woo started what it's like Tiger Hill Entertainment or something. I want to say, and it was like supposed to be like we're we're gonna do more. There's gonna be other John Woo games, and like I don't think it did that well. So, still waiting on the face off game. Yeah, just uh, I don't know. Hard target. Hard target rules. <laughs> I just want to oh, say that. that. Yeah. Damn. Um, that was a good movie. Yeah. Hard, that was before Face Off, right? I don't know. I think Hard Hard Target is like peak Hollywood John Woo, like before he started to fall off even a little bit. I don't think I've seen that. I should watch it. It's on Tubi. Yeah, Hard Target. Hard Target was ninety three. Face Off was ninety seven. Hmm. John Claude. I love I love Van Damme personally. <laughs> Me too. Uh, he's very watchable. Easy on the eyes when he does the splits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, count. What? What do you have? I know that that's uh, Grand Peter Moff. Cushing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is Cash on Demand from 1961. It's a crime thriller movie directed by Quentin Lawrence, starring Peter Cushing. Now, this is the one of the two that probably wouldn't be in a proper top 10, definitely not in my top 100, although maybe it is, but I never really thought about it until trying to figure out this list. 
But it's on here because I love Peter Cushing so goddamn much. And I love Hammer movies. So I want to really represent both of them in myself if I'm telling people about my film taste without repeating myself too, too much. They can kind of infer and like, oh, well, if he likes Peter Cushing, he must love him as Van Helsing. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so this but, is this is a Hammer movie, but it's not. This is a Hammer movie. I, I wasn't is. aware Hammer made movies that weren't. The colorized horror movies. <laughs> they did. They made not many, but they exist. And okay. this one, uh, Peter Cushing plays a bank manager, and he's dealing with a bank robber right before Christmas time. And the robber's claiming to be holding his family hostage. And the whole time, it's like a cat and mouse thriller. Is he really holding the family hostage? Is he not? Who knows what's going on? Amazing movie. I do genuinely like it, but it's also here because, like, like I said, I could fill a whole list full of horror movies. I could probably fill a whole list full of hammer horror movies. I just, I, I love all the mummy ones. I love the fucking Frankenstein's, like the Dracula's. They're not great, but I really, I went through a phase in college. I think it was my second year of college, and I just fucking binged like all the Hammer movies. <laughs> I think I like the Frankenstein's more than the Dracula's, but. Uh, but you like Frankenstein more in general. I, that's. Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Peter Cushing is great. Um, Have you ever seen a Hammer movie, Slushy? No. <laughs> okay. I have not. Well, they're, like I said, they're not great, but there's they, something to them. They're comfy. They're like, really comfortable to watch. They're They're comfortable if you like a lot of blood that looks like red paint. Right. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, there's there's two vampire lesbian movies so she might be interested in. Really? Right. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've I've seen like the first couple Draculas and like Dracula 1979 or whatever and uh Twins of Evil and Vampire Circus. Huh. I've never seen one of the mummy ones. Christopher Lee is the mummy in the first one with Peter Cushing. I don't think either of them are returned for the sequels. I can't remember. The Vampire Picnic. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he's Cushing is very good. What like what happens in this movie? It's crime. Is like what is he doing? He's, Did you say he's a bank manager and someone's trying to rob his bank? Okay, but they're saying like you have to comply because I have your your wife and daughter hostage, and he's like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that you do. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Good good framing here. You can see his wife and daughter there on the Right. Yeah, I tried to cho- uh choose pictures that really showed off kind of the movie without revealing too much. And I also wanted to do the gimmick of like black and white <laughs> without posters, I mean. Star Wars the only Peter Cushing anything I've seen? Uh, maybe what he's been else? in a lot of stuff. I'm trying to think of anything else you might have. If not Hammer, then you haven't seen, you haven't really seen any Vincent Price movies, right? No, the only Vincent Price anything I've seen is Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo. Right, that's <laughs> Daphne. I've heard right. recently. Right. Yes, uh, Daphne and Scooby are a couple. Daphne and. Sco- <laughs> what is what is his name? The man, Shaggy. Shaggy. Okay. What is the name Raggy? of the man? Yes. About Flim Flam. This makes oh, this thing. makes me think of some. I've, I had some movie on my hard drive, The Hard Way. I want to say it's like <laughs> George Papard assassin movie. I had on my hard drive for like six years and never got around to watching. I don't know why this makes me think of that. But have you seen that? that Do you know that? No, I haven't. Okay. I may have the title wrong, but this this seems like something I would have downloaded and then never got around to watching. I I think I watched this on YouTube a few years ago around Christmas time because it takes place around Christmas time. I don't know if I said that. So it's kind of good for that. See some it, snow there, yeah. Probably still on YouTube. <laughs> some people just don't care. All right. It's a nice little watch, you know? I, don't watch it now because it's not Christmas time. And they'll be like, well, this is a Christmas movie. 
Yeah, <laughs> just like the, Die Hard. You the can't famous watch it debate. Any other time is is cash on demand a Christmas movie or not? I'm sick <laughs> of this fucking debate. Stop bringing it up. No Start one bringing cares. it up when people bring up Die Hard. Just say, is cash on demand Christmas Gremlins. movie? So, weapon. speaking of Vincent Price. Peter Cushing. Oh, I love Christopher Lee, by the way, too. So that's kind of like all that. But please go ahead. Speaking of Vincent Price, uh, I t- talked about this earlier, but I, I used a foreign poster <laughs> because the American one, like them, sort of spoils a big thing of the movie. But the abominable Dr. Fibes. Uh, I, Vincent Price is my favorite actor, and this is my favorite Vincent Price movie. Uh, it is he. He is a villain. He is he's the villain in the sequel. They tried to turn him into like a pulp, like Fu Manchu, recurring kind of like anti-hero villain that didn't really take off. But it, this is just. He's just doing murders for revenge, and he is acting without being able to like move his face or speak. He's he's like speaking through a well, a, a record player basically that <laughs> he's rigged <laughs> to to project his voice, and he's just you know he's just doing it himself, like not without effects or anything, and it's a very strange. And darkly funny movie, and I love the character. And I don't know. That's what. What do you think, Count? I, you've seen it, right? I've seen it. I think it's very good. I like Vincent Price a lot. He's kind of in that Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing circle. They did it. I think they did two movies together. The three of them. Um, Is Christopher Lee in? Oh God, what's that one? What's that really I, weird like one that sucks? Um, he did a couple of those too. <laughs> it's like it's not from a whisper to a scream. That's just Vincent Price. It's um, it's like scream and scream again. Is Christopher Lee in that? Let me see. Because I know I know Cushing and Price are in that. That that is a weird movie that I don't like very much, but it's sort of interesting. I don't uh yeah all three of them are in that okay i don't remember who christopher lee was they might have all just been like the evil scientists i think so i know I've you guys ever listen to the lot. charlemagne albums don't know what that is it's christopher lee's christopher heavy lee. metal oh album. Yeah. oh no i yeah i do know that yeah the <laughs> I, I killed a thousand saxon men that one yeah yeah dr fives yeah. is a fantastic movie i it has that kind of uh 70s but still hangover 60s-ness of the colors and everything that i really like yeah when i saw uh glass onion like the production and the 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 like framing of that like really reminded me of this movie i don't know if that was like on purpose i don't know just like just like kind of like big extravagant colorful rich sets and like you know sort of a bunch of like uh what's the word eccentric characters who are dying i i don't know i feel like i feel like there was i didn't like that movie very much but i feel like there was probably some influence from if not this movie directly like this type of movie yeah probably i i could see uh johnson is that his name that directed that yeah ryan Ryan Johnson, yeah, he had, seems to have like a big appreciation for for films and the history of film. I'm looking up Doctor Fives, yeah, Carol Monroe is his wife in that. Okay, she's just like an actress in Hammer movies and one of the Bond movies. Very attractive woman. Yeah, uh, who's Volnavia in this? Volnavia is extremely attractive. Virginia North. <laughs> is she in anything else? Let's see. Fives. She, was, Fibes she only says, has like uh, five movies. Huh. So no. Weird. And it's like Fibes in his two movies, he has like this sort of homunculus like just like gorgeous woman assistant, Volnavia. I think I think it's a different actress in both movies, but I don't know, just a just a weird K 
character and the American poster and probably any cover of the film kind of <laughs> spoils a big reveal that they spend the entire film building up to. But, right. You know, whatever. It's fine. I, I've said, I don't know. I've said before, I don't really care that much about spoilers. I'm more about the moment and the whatever, but it's just, I, I, I don't really get... certain things. Yeah. Like I them, care. I thought it'd be interesting for people not to know that they're ants. Like if, if you didn't know that just to see the reaction. Yeah. Cause it does seem to be that they, they, it does seem like they're making the movie to build up to the ant. Right. And have it be a surprise. <laughs> Otherwise, you're yelling at the screen, show the end already. Yeah, which I'm sure many did. Yeah. Any thoughts on this or Slushy? Slushy missed this when I recently yeah. played it. <laughs> which I feel okay. bad about. Last time. Well, Halloween's <laughs> coming up again. This price is great for that. Yeah. Just blink twice and it'll be here. So we're skipping Slushies 5, which I accidentally put. Is that right? Yeah. I guess, done count 6? I guess I, we did. That's cash on demand. Okay. Oh, so we're on count right. 5. So we're on... I accidentally skipped you, Slushy. <laughs> I didn't consciously do it, but... Okay. Well, that's count. what I asked for, so it's fine. Counts 5. I think I know what this is. My 5, yeah. Based on things you've said. This is Stanley Kubrick's Pass the Glory from 1957. It's on Tubi. I know I've talked about it before with Mortis. It's an anti-war movie and has Kirk Word. Douglas as a commanding officer in during World War One. What are we saying, Slushy? Never heard of it. I had I had never in my life heard of this. <laughs> and I had, so, you know, I had This is my favorite Kubrick seen movie. Seen a lot of Kubrick movies. Uh it it takes place during World War One and it's about an officer disobeying orders and cowardice and it's one of the best movies i've ever seen easily in my top 10 legitimately and it we're just talking about spoilers the whole movie builds up to something and i can't say what it is <laughs> do you feel like this has been like in some way buried like because of its message or appeal or something like people just maybe people don't talk about this in like the it, Kubrick discourse, which when I was, you know, when I was a it's teen. It's an incredible movie, very anti-war. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if either of you or listeners, because maybe a lot of listeners haven't seen it, so I won't spoil it. I was debating to spoil it to really talk about it, but if we all watch it, we can talk about it at some point. Yeah, we could do an episode on it. Yeah, because I'd like to see it. it. I think maybe it has been buried because people don't really talk about. It. They also don't talk about any Kubrick's noir movies. He made like three of them. They're really good. His what movies? His like film noir, like oh, detective yeah, yeah, movies. Yeah. Um, people don't talk about them. Everyone, nobody ever fucking shuts up about Lolita. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I don't know why. How come nobody talks about this? Uh, they should. It's really good. It's very moving. It's very. Uh, masculine movie, but like, I don't know what's the opposite of toxic masculinity. It's like positive masculinity. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Have you seen uh, Cross of Iron? I have not. Sam Peckinpah? No. I, I wonder if there might be any similarity there. I don't know. Because Cross of Iron is a a movie about a Nazi unit, <laughs> but it's like they don't want to be there and they're having a horrible time. Like most of them don't want to be there. Some of them do, but you know, it's just like their horrible time in the war and with each other. And I don't know. Yeah. Could be, have taken some from this. I feel like people, I mean, it has great reviews and people seem to, to love it. And if you look up stuff about it, people have like in depth conversations about past the glory, but within the film circle, on like a lower level of not yeah. academ academia. People yeah. don't talk about it. Yeah, I just I just like again, when I was like a teenager and like sort of getting into movies, it's like the Kubrick the Kubrick collection two thousand one Clockwork Orange. 
Lolita. The Shining. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's all he did. <laughs> Wait, okay. I don't know. This, this, this is my favorite shot one by him. Soon. It's just, it's. I I have it. I have a I have a lot of written for all these other movies, and this is just like a few words because I really don't want to say anything about it. So I'm trying not to. Well, it looks nice from this one frame. <laughs> <laughs> It appears. So I can good. say it appears to be well shot and looks uh, competently made. Slushy, are you back? I am back. Hello. Okay. Uh, skipping your five. Here's your four. You, you use some color on this one. Yeah. Uh, this was the first one that I drew, and I did have a color layer for it. And then I realized that if I had a color layer on all 10 of them, it would have taken me 12 hours uh, rather than the two that it took me to just kind of trace them. Uh, it was a dumb gimmick, and I regret doing it, but good. whatever. That's um, good. <laughs> so Tokyo Godfathers, I have a lot to say about. Um, I, will, I will get into my process of how I chose my top 10. Uh, right now, um, this may go over the five minutes. Uh, please spare me your ire. Uh, start. Uh, we've we've got time to make up. Okay. We've we've gone under five several times. If this right. is where you want to use it, yeah. Um, I decided that I would write out every movie, the name of every movie I remember seeing and enjoying, uh, and then I you know, forgot like 10 of them and I've been reminded of them as we've been doing this podcast. That always happens. A little bit longer yeah. Now. yeah. Um, but then I decided with the 58 movies I had at the time that I would do a round robin tournament, uh, <laughs> to decide, um, what the best movies were. I already had my top three. Um, so those are already set, but then for the remaining 55, uh, I had a round robin. Tokyo Godfathers won every matchup, except for against my top three, uh, which is why it's number four, and that's how tournaments work. Um, <laughs> and that's how tournaments work, brother. It took like fucking three hours to do this, and I hate that I did it, but I feel like there's no other way I could have figured out my list without doing it, because my brain is fucked up and bad. Um, Tokyo Godfathers is a movie about three homeless people that find a baby in the garbage on Christmas Eve. Um, this is another Christmas movie. Uh, I, I feel like it should be watched at all times of the year. I'm starting to tear up just thinking about it. Uh, mainly because one of the characters in this is a trans woman. Um, and like, when did this movie come out? This was like the early two thousands, I think. Because mm -hmm. Satoshi Kon died shortly after this was done. Oh, I didn't realize uh, that. 2003. And for a trans person to be re represented this well, uh, this early in the 2000s. Out of its time. Yeah, especially coming from Japan where it's like. Right. It's different. <laughs> yeah, say that. People. People say there's no trans people in Japan, but then like, you know, the, the trans they, characters that come out of Japan are always the butt of the joke. And like, mm -hmm. that is the case for this character throughout a lot of the movie, but then it's, that's used to like help you understand that character and the shit she has gone through. And like the reason she is homeless is because of her transness. Um, there's if you if you just look at this movie just as a film it's incredibly well made you know the storytelling is off the charts the pay, it is paced like a motherfucker <laughs> you know there's there is never a dull it. moment every 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 quiet moment is there for a reason every every slow build up every fucking Everything about this movie. This is maybe one of the best movies of all time, and I, I. Well, was it only? I know four? people like <laughs> because <laughs> because this is my list. It's not the list. Um, right. Yeah, but like 
I know I know people like to be hyperbolic in in this era of the internet and clickbait and all that bullshit, but this is legitimately one of the greatest movies of all time. This movie will stand up there with with the you know commonly recognized greats like Lolita. <laughs> Like two thousand one, <laughs> like two thousand one, like the other Kubrick movie you mentioned, Clockwork Orange. Yeah. Um, I have a lot to say about it, but I feel like people should just watch it. I um you watch sh- it with friends. Be ready to cry. Be ready to laugh. Be ready to be pissed off. You know, it's that's what a, a movie's about. Is uh, exactly. giving, giving you emotion you, know, you you showed this to me um and i you know i'd heard of it but like i you maybe tell from my top 10 i don't really like seek out movies that aren't action or horror <laughs> right <laughs> you know and this is i i guess you would say this is a drama but like you know for sure you, you think about a drama you think about like Robert Redford and Julia Roberts sitting in a room and like just sort of like being mad <laughs> right. at each other. It's like, I don't want to fucking watch that. This is just, right. this is a good, a really good human story. And I did cry and it was good. Like, really well animated from just like an artistic standpoint. Yeah. I think that, you know. I think that people don't watch animated movies very much. And I think anime itself has a really bad reputation to in the, like the, I don't want to say academia, but like the, right. the quote unquote serious, you know, yeah. film critique circles. And like, I'm, I'm not part of those circles and I've never been in part of those circles. So maybe I'm talking completely out of my ass, but like, I feel like there are movies that are just ignored because of their medium. Yeah. And like, I, that's probably, that's probably a safe thing to say. Yeah. Cause I'm sure there yeah. are awesome live action movies that one, are ignored because of their medium. Like one, you know, the Oscars or whatever bullshit, but like there, there is, there gets to be one animated movie a year that counts. And it's right. usually Pixar. Right. Um, anime which and isn't anime animation. Shit on a lot. But yeah, the anime. There's probably this. I it's either like for kids or it's, it's horny girls and tentacles <laughs> and big <laughs> eyes, right? right like that's, sometimes it's well deserved. <laughs> well, that sometimes stuff and not. that stuff's fine, and I some of that's really good. But you can do anything with animation. That's the good right. thing of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on Tubi. It's God, on, is it? Yeah, it is. It's on Tubi. It's on, on Pluto, Tubi? Pluto. It's on Roku Channel. It's like it's on all the all the great free services. Uh, Do you think Tubi would sponsor this? Possibly. <laughs> <Do they? laughs> Maybe they should at this point. <laughs> they uh, they do like you know movies that clearly have no budget. Right, I've never, I've never seen a Tubi original, and I don't have any desire right. to. Right, they do but... Tubi original content, so yeah, it's true. Yeah, something we could look into. I don't know. Go watch, go watch Tokyo Godfather. Seriously, you don't have to wait until Christmas. Yeah, you absolutely okay. do not. I'll wait until Christmas. <laughs> I'm like, so my number four is Hobo with a Shotgun. And I think this movie is, I would have a hard time defending this movie (laughs) if somebody was like (laughs) coming at me about it, (laughs) but like, cause it's dumb and it's trashy, but like it knows that it is. Um, I think it, I think it's one of the best looking movies. (laughs) Like it's completely oversaturated in almost every shot. And it's you know often really like not super well lit like it's just very it feels i don't know like 
You remember Grindhouse? You remember that shit? <laughs> yeah. Like, like specifically those two movies. Well, yeah, the the two movies called Grindhouse and sort of like that like thing where everyone was like, oh yeah, uh, shit from the seventies that sucked is actually really cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like this is the ultimate expression of that sentiment. Like, they finally got it right <laughs> with Oppo with a shotgun, and it's like. It's very, it's very like Canadian on purpose. It's very like unashamedly Canadian. Like they have the fucking Canadian like uh, DeLorean <laughs> in the movie and like, you know, uh, Run With Us, the only Canadian pop song ever. Um, I don't know. I, I love this movie. It's very, it's extremely violent and I dumb. <laughs> and ugly but also it's just very bright and fun and fun to look at so it's a great fun action movie also on Tubi <laughs> I'm glad we have back checkers for this I didn't huh. also you see right there it says Rutger Hauer that that dude is a good fucking actor yes he rules I've been I've been meaning to do like an actor ranking or something. I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen this slushy, by the way? Yeah. Um, I had always had, I always had it like in the back of my mind that the hobo with a shotgun. For some reason, I thought it was based off of like a YouTube short. It's I, there, there's a short, there is a, a short film of it. Is it just a trailer? Okay. okay. It, the trailer aired in front of the Grindhouse double feature uh, back in the day. Okay. All right. That makes sense for some reason and i've i've never seen a video essay on this one otherwise <laughs> i probably would have would have gone into it with higher expectations when i first watched it uh with mortis but i always thought it was just like some stupid dog shit thing and then when mortis said it was one of his favorite movies however long ago i was like legitimately shocked because you know for the, for those who are fans of the mortis stream i am the fucking i do hold the virtue of kissing ass <laughs> and I think I do legitimately think that Mortis's opinions on things are usually pretty good and in line with my own. Um, so I was like surprised, like really elbow with a shotgun. You like that fucking dog shit. And I think watching this with Mortis for the first time really helped, you know, helped me realize that. I had already kind of known it with like Street Fighter the movie and the Mario Brothers movie and Highlander 2 that general film critique is full of fucking morons who don't know how to enjoy things. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but watching Hobo with a Shotgun and just enjoying it as much as I did and how fucking like Mortis said, it's ugly as hell, but it's it's beautiful. It's a fucking feast for the eyes. Everybody is in it like giving it their fucking all the script is great it is high camp you know it is camp to the highest fucking degree and it is it, it is it is exactly what they want it to be in the most beautiful way possible and i think film critics are more <laughs> slushy have you seen the hitcher no i haven't i seen love that. the I hitcher i'm is. so rucker howard i'm so fucking mad uh it was on HBO, but like Cinemax got the rights, so now you have to get Cinemax <laughs> to get it. Oh. And it's like it used to be on YouTube, but now it's not. We'll have to find it other yeah. ways. I also love the Hitcher, and he's also a hobo with a shotgun and that slushy. Mm. He's, a, he's a drifter. He is a drifter. <laughs> yeah, but, it's like a homeless man. But, uh, like he's a hobo with a shotgun in this, and you know he's. But he, he like he plays a very like vulnerable, tender character with a violent streak. In right, this. right, right. They're very different characters. Yeah. I was just making the the parallel to. I want to talk about Hitcher to get Slushy on board with that. Yeah, and the fact that you like it too. Hell yeah! I love the Hitcher. <laughs> awesome movie. Um, but then there's also the plague, and. <laughs> 
God, slushy, so fucking cool. Slushy was when we watched this. Slushy they're was cool. like, "The movie has become a different movie, and now the plague is in it." It's <laughs> like, I don't feel like it's that stark, but I guess if you came in with different expectations, it's like it is kind of a whiplash. But yeah, I don't know. We're over the five. Okay. Uh, count four. Four. Okay. No idea. This is Kiss Me Deadly. This is my noir selection because I could easily fill up a top 10 of lists of noir movies such as Murder by Contract, The Big Heat, The Third Man, Ride the Pink Horse. They're all good, but we're not here to talk about that. Is this classic noir or neo noir? This is a classic noir, 1955. <laughs> wow. Really flexing there. Oh, I'm flexing, baby. I meant slushy. Oh. Sorry. I, I like referencing people in Count's chat. <laughs> Oh, it's very fun to be. I see. I see. Well, it's, it's, this is directed by Robert Aldrich, who did also Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, The Dirty Dozen, and The Longest Yard. Perhaps you've heard of those. It's in passing. Either of you? Dirty Dozen is that thing Raz does, right? It is. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I've heard of The Dirty Dozen. I've seen Dirty Dozen. Uh, yeah. Outside of the Raz one, I've heard of it, but I've never okay. watched it. The same director it has Ralph Meeker as Mike Hammer. Ralph Meeker also co-stars in Pans of Glory, so connection there. He looks pretty different, though. So Ralph Meeker plays this private eye called Mike Hammer, who was That's a, good name. A, a character in a bunch of Mickey Spillane uh, pulp books. Okay. This movie rules. It begins with a woman running down the street, and she's only wearing a trench coat, and she's clearly naked underneath, and Mike Hammer picks her up, and then they drive off, and then she's like, they get into an accident, and then he hears her get, like, fucking murdered, and it, like, just takes off crazy from there. But it's also the first movie to do the glowing suitcase bullshit. <laughs> like, they open it, and there's a glow, you mean? Right. Okay. Like, the start of that. Yeah, yeah. Like in that movie that Doom is named after? Not the movie, but the... Pulp Fiction? It is like, yeah, and that's where Tarantino got the idea for Pulp Fiction. The Doom is named after... What are you talking about? Well, don't they about? do it in that... The Tom Cruise movie where he opens the case and there's a fucking pool cue in it called Doom, and that's where they named the game after. Doesn't that do the glowing suitcase thing, too? Is that Cocktail? I don't know about that. Maybe? But I know I... they do it in <laughs> Repo Man. Yeah, yeah. And they do it in Pulp Fiction. Oh, okay. And they both got it from Kiss Me Deadly. It's okay. you know, pretty good. Great movie. He also, I like Mike Hammer because he has a steady girlfriend. He's not just like sleezing it up. So it looks like cool he's sleezing it up. Well, the femme fatale is going to femme fatale, but he's an honest <laughs> dick. So I've, I think I've, I've seen one like actual non neo noir movie and I've read one noir book and I enjoyed them both so I I guess I should see it I should consume more noir yeah you'd probably like this is a good one cuz it's it's still it's on the edge of neo noir neo noir might be considered even just a few years after this but it's really good some early noir from like the fucking 30s or 40s can be kind of rough but at this point they're they're pretty good Cool. What? I would like to see noir, more noir movies. More noir. More noir. We're gonna. Oh, wait, I wanted to. I wanted to plug something. I write Edgar Roth stories. They're free. You can get them. <laughs> They're free. Where can you get e-books them? Ebooks are. Do you have to have? What do you? <laughs> do you have to have Kindle <laughs> Unlimited? How do you get them? Oh, how do you get them? You could. The easiest way is to go to Count Pupper on Twitch and click my books link, and then from there you will see the free ebooks for all my Edgar Rolfe Rolf stories. They're also free on Amazon. Seem to right there or wherever else ebooks are sold. But these ones are free. Wow, I didn't know there were free books. I'll Thank have to you. charge Thank my you. Kindle again. <laughs> You could also get the Kindle app on Amazon on uh, uh, what is it called Android, which doesn't work that good. But uh. <laughs> or if you really ever want to read anything that I write, I will send you a PDF. 
Maybe we should get this guy to sponsor the show. Damn. Kiss me deadly. Kiss me deadly. All right. Can we do your three, Slushy? Is that... Yeah. Why is that going to come up in your top ten? <laughs> yeah, that's my number two. No, I don't know what your three yeah. is until right now. Uh, it is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this came out in 91, the year I was born. Um, I did not watch it when I was a kid, but I thought I did. Turns out when I was a kid, I watched uh, three? <laughs> 90, this came out. So a year before I was born. Two was 91. Okay. Anyway, I saw uh, this I, in the I, theater. I, more anime like bullshit at the time. I loved it at the time. Do you still love it? I don't love it. I do like it. Uh, I also there love are it at the time and now just kind of like it. <laughs> there are two movies that at any point you can say, "Hey, let's watch this movie." I will say. It. Uh, the other one is my number one. Um, maybe three. We'll see about my number two. I'll need to watch it again before I can decide. You're throwing a lot of numbers like, at me. <laughs> anyway, this is this is the this is one of the movies where uh, when I was working at a family video uh, that no longer exists, it's now a Dollar General. Um, people who live in the Midwest may be familiar with Family Video. They were just a, a chain of family-owned, Christian-owned. Uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we had, like in Kansas and Missouri, I don't think we really got that many family videos. They may have been like a a northern Midwest It's mostly blockbuster as far as chain. Yeah. Um, Family video is like one of the few that survived for a really long time. They've only started uh, really closing down stores again, like in the last, like the year before COVID. Um, But I, I was working there. And we had the, you know, the, like a TV in every corner of the store situation. And after 5 PM, you could stop running the, the ad DVD that would make you want to tear your brain out of your ear. (laughs) Um, and instead, you know, put on a movie as long as it was, as long as it was on the lower end of a PG 13 movie, then it was fine. Um, so the two movies I watched all the time were my number one movie, which we'll get to and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, I would watch it and like, usually from like, I was working until close, which was midnight, which is fucking ridiculous for a movie rental place. In my opinion, uh, who's watching a movie after age, midnight, Whatever. someone on Netflix, <laughs> right? You know, but, um, I would, I would put it on. There'd be pretty much no one in the store. So I'd get to just stand there and lean on the counter and watch it. And then when it was done, I'd hit play again. Um, this movie is definitely for kids of the era. Um, but it is so much fun. I just, it has no go ahead. I I don't feel like it's um super for kids. Like I don't I don't think like not they, super. For what kids, wasn't Shaw like, Brothers involved in this somehow? Did I imagine that? They very well may have been. Didn't, I they, didn't they work on at least the first one in some I think the capacity? Henson Company worked on the Turtles, right? Probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Ralph says damn, but I Raph, think this one's not, not super for kids, but the sequels are. They become more for kids, for sure. But, like, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, the original Turtles comics is, like, kind of edgy, and this this still sort of reflects that. Yeah. Yeah. More so than the cartoon, which I think was sort of just starting to be a thing, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember the I think the cartoon was eighty seven, so it would have been a couple of years. Okay. Um but uh when I say for kids, I mean I you know it is a movie a kid could definitely watch. Yes. And really love without feeling pandered to. You know, yeah, it's one of those movies. I feel like there's a few movies that are like ostensibly for kids, but they don't like pander to the child demographic as adults see it. Right. So it it becomes like a much better movie because of that, because it you know treats children as humans. Right, treats right. kids with respect, like Batman yeah. the animated series did. 
Yeah, exactly. And like Batman, the fucking first Tim Burton movie. Kind right. Of I would, I would let a child watch that. Um, Tim Burton uses but, things kids are are scared of. They he uses things kids love against them to scare them. <laughs> Have you ever seen that video? <laughs> no, yeah, what? That sounds that it's, sounds great. It's it's about Batman Returns, and it's like some talk show, and like some ladies like interviewing kids, and some some nine year old is like, I hate this movie. I think it should be illegal because Tim Burton is using things kids love, like clowns and presents, to scare kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing anyway yeah, yeah that that kid probably grew up to be a real insufferable son of a bitch yeah maybe he turned around <laughs> hard to say maybe. anyway um, but yeah i think this this kind of hits on a lot of the the big tent poles for 90s action in my opinion maybe late 80s early 90s action of like street gangs mm-hmm. and warehouse <laughs> warehouse <laughs> hangouts and i don't they don't fight in like a boiler room at any point do they no but like they do fight in the sewer yeah and like their sewer hangout is is basically a boiler room with like pizza on the floor right um, but it's it's not like the billy blanks boy right um i don't know this movie's just so fucking good the turtles are incredibly relatable in a way that is like they're i don't know they're they're not cartoon characters in this because they're people in suits and it's a movie that happens in real life but also they're not written like cartoon characters um you know they have feelings they have emotions the shit that goes on between leo and raf and like the the scene of raf waking up in the bathtub and all that stuff like i don't know it's a very it's just a good movie (laughs) and i will watch it you can say hey slushy let's watch turtles and i'll be like hell yeah dude let's fucking watch turtles i I should see this again also two and three are like like, not as well liked but i think they're still good okay that went to that went to six minutes We're, we're, we're getting towards the end so i think we can that's count sorry uh <laughs> count do you want to do your three <laughs> i brought it we up can. that's ernest borgnine isn't it it is i don't know the movie though this is marty from 1955 but it did come out before kiss me deadly so it's technically chronologically in order it's on tubi it's a romance <laughs> movie Directed by Dilbert Mann, and it stars Ernest Borgnine as the titular character Marty. He's a bachelor at 34 who still lives at home with his mom, who is constantly nagging him about finding a woman and settling down. The story takes place, I think, over the course of like maybe just a day or two, and it's the blossoming relationship of Marty and a school teacher that he meets at like a at a dance, like a gathering, kind of like a bar dance meetup. And then it's seeing how his friends and his mom reacts to this woman. Um, what I think is funny is that they keep referring to her as a dog in like a bad way that she's like ugly. And I think she's kind of cute. She's not like, I don't know. They just keep calling her ugly. It's like really rude. <laughs> she's like yeah. to her face and stuff. Weird. Oh, well, you and, like, know how people are about women. And then Ernest Borgnine is talking about like how ugly he is and everything. Is there like a class situation going on? No, it's just that they're both old and relatively older, and yeah. they're both unmarried for the time, and they're trying to like see, feel each other out to see if they should date, and you know, see where it goes from there. They're both very lonely. Um, I like this movie because it's you know, I boast about my Italian American representation a lot. That doesn't involve the mafia, and this is like really good example <laughs> of that. <laughs> Like, it seems, like, very genuinely, like, he, like this is the 50s, but, like, my family is still kind of like this. <laughs> so two, two more years to go for me, baby. Until you're Marty? Yeah, until I'm Marty. All right. Uh, it's a good movie. Good rom- I'm not big on romance, either, but... Yeah. This one, like... I don't know, there's the whole incel movement. That's like big now. I'm not into that. I'm, yeah, I have a girlfriend, I've heard about that, like yeah. a steady girlfriend, by the way. But like, we're unmarried, <laughs> so they're still like that in an Italian American family. Yeah. But 
uh he's not an incel is what i'm getting at he's just like a dude that hasn't found his hasn't found a woman to marry yet you know yeah i think back then there was a real uh emphasis on getting married young and fucking dealing with it even if you hate each other right right so it's it's cool to have a it's cool to think about a film where like they kind of go against that even well, part of it like his friend and his mom's nagging him to get like a girlfriend and then he brings this girl around and then they just like try to break them up immediately like they don't want marty to be happy and that's like a big part of the movie horrible <laughs> sounds like a... it's good yeah. it's a good movie sounds good genuinely in my top 10 by the way so okay this is a is this one of the two that's no that's coming up next i do like Ernest. that you said that two in this top 10 are in your real top 10 or two that are in this top 10 aren't in your real top 10 i don't two in this are not when it be in my real top 10 okay this is not one this would be in my genuinely top 10 movies cool i think it's incredible I like your Ernest Borgnine. Do you, do you want a little like anecdote <laughs> about from my, you? Sure. So I was big into Ernest Borgnine when I was like under five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure why. Maybe just like he's an airwolf, right? Um, I think so. Uh, it must have just been that, but like <laughs> there was. I don't remember what I was talking to my I, either my aunt or my grandma. I was saying something about. Ernest board nine, you know board nine, nine boards of wood. <laughs> so, like, that's, very young mortis. Yeah, basically every Christmas, that's something that I have to hear again. So. <laughs> that adorable. And, yeah, but he's he's good. He's, he is good. He loves this to he loves, loves to jack of off. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Classic that. Classic clip. Okay, so me. Me three. You three. Is versus. And I guess just ultimate versus now. Another situation of directors. <laughs> not I mean it's not really a director's cut situation, uh, but this is I talked about how it hard boiled is like the best pure action movie and this is the best action movie for me (laughs) uh just because it's as i also talked about the the dead hero (laughs) the undead protagonist we got that in the invincible dead guy uh i guess not strictly but sort of um it's a this came out sort of in the wake of the Matrix, and I feel like it was marketed in America as like that kind of. Uh, it's like hip. It's like hip, cool Asian action. It's it's over the top. It's great, uh, you know. And I guess it I've is never that. heard of this. You've never I've heard no, of this. I have no idea what you're, what this is. Wow. Okay. Um. It's a. What it is is a martial arts uh action horror movie a bunch of people very it's very low budget a bunch of people go in a forest and fucking shoot and beat up zombies for like two and a half hours <laughs> that sounds awesome um it's i'm surprised cool. you've never heard of this i feel like I feel like this is like if you go on like a dating site, <laughs> this is a weird point of reference, but like if you go on a dating site, people will list this in their like top movies, at least when I was thinking about dating <laughs> like really? a decade ago. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's not a thing anymore, but um, some people know about this. Yeah. So like, okay, the movie came out. It's Japanese. It's directed by Ryuhei Kitamura. Um, he like John Woo came to America <laughs> and fell off, but he, he sort of fell off like in Japan. Um, his first oh, he did midnight train. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, 
his his trademark like every single film he does is there will be a climactic scene where the camera is the the protagonist and the antagonist are back to back and the camera rotates around them it's in this it's in midnight meat train it's in he did a wwe studios movie that's just like i don't know male fantasy (laughs) like people people say taken is like male dad fantasy like that's absolutely what that movie is i don't even remember the name um so his first movie is called heat no it's not called heat after dark i think that was what's it called fuck okay exit Exit? well anyway versus is like a it's like a sequel to a movie that was him making evil dead okay Like, like he and his he and his friends just like made evil dead and then versus is like what if we do that with more budget and more action (laughs) so and then like ultimate versus is like an extra half hour of footage that they filmed later and inserted back into the movie just to put more action into the movie like it's it's almost too long at that point (laughs) but like it's all good shit and like some of some of the best shit in the movie is inserted I just, later. Well, I gotta watch this. Sounds right I'm, up my alley. I'm looking at Ryu Kitamura's filmography. Yeah. He did the fucking cutscenes for Twin Snakes. He directed those. Was now that him? Because I've Snakes. I've heard yes. that it was somebody else. Is that what it's saying? Where what you're looking at? That's what it says on Wikipedia. Okay, because I've weird. I've heard that it's um, just like the guy who did the special effects for Versus is who did that. I'm not sure. There's it well, could be. I him. mean it's in his style. It makes a absolutely. hell of a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Um uh like it's just it's it's very inspired by Evil Dead. It's very inspired by Highlander. Wears it on its sleeve. Uh just a very cool action movie that's just fucking schlock <laughs> like i count you said about uh night of the living dead like when yes. when this came out i i watched this movie every day for like a month <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> and I, I would like watch the movie and then i would watch the dub audio and then i would watch the commentary and then i would go back to just <laughs> the subs but yeah i gotta i gotta watch this interesting i huh yeah i think i think you had to be in like a certain Type of movie circle at a very specific time like heard about this because he's he's fallen off as a director that people talk about i think he's still making shit i think he made some sniper movie for like some streaming service like a couple years ago i don't know apparently did the live action lupon did he yeah, I need to do godzilla final wars crazy yeah i don't like final wars that much but i don't know <laughs> Final Wars as it's... Oh boy, you're not going to like my number one. Is it Final Wars? No. (laughs) Just kidding. Okay. Slushy, you're number two. Speaking of Highlander. Speaking of Highlander. (laughs) Oh, shit. Highlander was the one I was saying that I would need to watch it again before I can decide if I would watch it anytime. I'm kind of leaning towards that I would. I love... Christopher Lambert. He is one of my favorite actors in the world. <laughs> Not for the reasons people usually like actors, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of that, because of his accent, because of how he just always seems like he's having the time of his fucking life, no matter what movie he's making. If it's Highlander or Mortal Kombat or Beowulf, this dude is enjoying it. Um, I love the concept of the story of Highlander. I love it even more because of Highlander 2. I love Highlander 2. It just didn't make my top 10. Um, This movie is so fucking cool. Um, The dude that plays the bad guy does an amazing job. Yeah. Like, again. Did you know he plays plays, uh, Mr. Krabs? On SpongeBob? Yeah, I do that. Okay. Yeah. Um 
you know, what I said about movies from this era about warehouses and street <laughs> gangs. Like there aren't really necessarily street gangs in this movie, but the bad guy whose name I forget, what's he called? The Morris? Kurgan. Yeah, the Kurgan is basically just like an entire street gang distilled into one person. Yeah. You know, of this era at least. Um the the storytelling you know, them going back and forth between modern day and his past life as the Highlander. Um, the action, the fucking, just the idea that there's a bunch of people walking around in the real world with swords under their trench coats, ready to fight to the death at any moment. Yeah. The fucking scene in the church. Oh my God. This is, like as far as action movies that take themselves seriously Highlander one is like truly in my eyes one of the best it is hard to beat the vibes of this fucking film i don't know like i'm I sure i love that you love it so Highlander. much i think that's great <laughs> yeah how do you feel about highlander counts no i like it i mean it, okay. i don't I think it's good. How do you feel about Highlander 2? I don't really That's remember much question. Highlander 2. Okay. And then I don't Highlander think I've seen 2. any other ones or the show or anything. So. Yeah. I mean, Highlander is an incredibly well known movie. There's only so much you can say about it that people haven't said or heard already. But I will say, I will take a couple moments to say Highlander 2 does not deserve the hate it gets. That's a fun fucking movie. It is not traditionally good, but it's a fun fucking movie. I've I've seen Highlander 2 I want to say 3 times and I couldn't tell you a single thing that happens in it. <laughs> um there's a shield that stops pollution <laughs> I think that's the only yep. the only thing I remember and like I know academically that Michael Ironside is in it and his name yep. is General Katana. Yep. <laughs> and I I want to see the original movie where they are from planet Zeist, but I, yeah, I want to see you it. Cannot too. see it without some kind of connection <laughs> or a VHS, I guess. I'm really surprised that hasn't just like gotten onto the internet and is out there. It could just how be much on people archive. fucking talk I don't about. like, I've never looked, but I like Highlander. I've kind of like the crow I've like rediscovered in the past couple of years is like, Oh yeah, I really like this. It's not on my top ten. I should rewatch both of those. I agree. I'm not li- also... liking the crow more as like if I'm thinking about it, but you know, maybe yeah. I like Highlander a lot. I I liked Highlander more than I remembered ever doing. Okay, like like Highlander was. Like we put just put it on after school and like oh look there's Sean Connery. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they're okay. They're, <laughs> they're fighting swords now. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of like, it's one of those things like, like Ghostbusters, I guess, where it's like they, they invented a very cool world. that's just like internally consistent and cool. <laughs> it's, and they didn't have to make a bunch of sequels, but they did. Money and toys and, yeah. and cartoons. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the place. I, ever... The place I grew up playing Magic: The Gathering. Uh, they had the Highlander TV show on twenty four seven. Somehow, I did. I guess they were taping it, but like, I, I never, I never got it. I never got the TV show. It's it's probably kind of fun to watch, but it does seem like Highlander two original VHS release is on archive. It is panned and scanned like a motherfucker, though. Cool, cool. Um, do you know who Spoonie is? Oh yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I, I realized after seeing how many of his things are on archive about Highlander. Really fucking weird. I didn't. Um, I didn't know he did stuff about Highlander. That's how I. I I remember now, like that's how I got into Highlander as I used to watch Spoonie. That's wow. the same reason I like Red Brown. It's because of fucking wow. Spoonie. It's too bad about that guy. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think he's wrong about Highlander too. I think he hates it, <laughs> but he, he's wrong. Uh, so what do you know about Ultima? You ever watch his Ultima videos? He was the only yeah. the only person on the internet with meaningful Ultima thought or critique. Maybe even to this wow. day. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's me. I know I know Captain Raz knows Spoonie. Oh, I only know him from like a few videos. That's it. But. He he went insane. <laughs> he told Maybe one of his coworkers <laughs> he wanted to tie her up in the basement and have sex with her, and that's you know. Uh-oh. <laughs> if See, what I know him from is we saw uh Crystal Skull in theaters and we thought it was terrible and like he had a video up about it within like a few minutes after anyone's theatrical <laughs> like <laughs> you know what I'm talking about like by the yeah, time we yeah, got yeah. home and we were looking yeah. stuff up online about it he had a video about it and like we we're like who's this guy and that's that's, that's how I know him Crystal Skull also a great movie that I love nope Sorry, that's the I <laughs> look. Do we, need, no. do we need to talk about Crystal Skull now? No, we don't, because we're talking about the Goonies, a great movie, a fantastic movie. Please, Mortis, go ahead. <laughs> so, Celestia was saying on Turtles, uh, for kids, but not pandering to kids. Um, mm-hmm. I think that fits Goonies. Uh, I loved it as a kid. Uh, I said, I, you know, I, I saw this in the theater and I, every time sloth was on the screen, I got out of my seat and hid behind my seat. I was terrified. <laughs> of sloth. Of sloth? He was, he scared the shit out of me. Um, and I must've been like three, but I don't know. This is a, from this movie has always been in my life like since I've had a brain and I th- I think what you know these kids are all they're very believable friends they you know like they absolutely seem like they have a life together and a history together and they love each other and they go on adventures and it's great like great Spielberg influence <laughs> um my my freaking avatar on here is you know slushy druid, but it's from from the Goonies game. Uh, little picture of Steven Spielberg. <laughs> uh, you get five thousand points for picking him up. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> cool. If, if you kick the air and in, in towards the right of stage two in the Goonies Famicom, <laughs> there's a little Steven Spielberg. Also, one of your favorite games, right? Absolutely, yes. It's a good fucking game. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, just uh... I like I like the Goonies. I think it's, it's great. It's one of those movies that was always on, but I would just keep watching it over and over again. I thought that the the girl is super cute. Which one? There's two. The one with long hair, the cheerleader, <laughs> Andy. Yeah, yeah, Andy. The one you're supposed to think is cute. Look, I'm a basic bitch. I, I like Daphne. I like Andy. Okay. Yeah. Is the other girl the Fratelli mother? No, Steph. No, just a. Uh, she has Plimpton, short hair. Plimpton, whatever her first name is. It's been a while since I've properly seen it. This I know. One, I I know. I do right like here. it. Um. I tried watching it during a shift at the family video but it suddenly got very busy um so i was very stressed out helping customers who are generally always rude uh when they're white at least and um all all i heard for like an hour and a half was children screaming and that is not a good way to experience i guess it i could see it not being great background noise um, they are very loud. They do scream a lot down down the tunnel at each other's face. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a good movie, though. I have seen it multiple times before then. I do really enjoy it. It's been a while. I would like to watch it again sometime soon. Uh, 
Uh, just you love know, the Goonies. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I just, feel like it's. it's good. How do you feel about the octopus scene being cut? Uh, you know, I I I noticed that at like age seven or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. People always. I feel like I must have seen it on TV because it was on the TV cuts. It was, yeah. And and then like I got the I got the soundtrack vinyl for Christmas. Not I don't know, probably a birthday or something. But like I remember listening to it and on the Eight Arms to Hold You song, I was like, "Is this is this for the octopus? <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this?" And I don't even I don't remember. Is I'm it sure in the it game? Is. The song? No, the octopus. Oh. There is, yeah. The game does have okay. octopuses, but it's not like a big... They're just like small enemies. It's weird cut. I don't know. Some of the... Some of the cuts more understandable. The monkeys. Uh, I have I seen... Know, what's the, the monkeys? Mon- I don't know about the monkeys. <laughs> There's, there is a subplot about... I don't know if it's when Sloth is like banging the pipes and causing havoc... But okay. somehow a truck with monkeys gets knocked over and these two monkeys like go on a journey and an adventure, <laughs> like they steal a car and shit. Like they're, I believe there's, we watched the movie Greystoke, the legend of Tarzan a while ago. And I heard the reason I heard about that movie is again, hats off entertainment uh, was doing a video about like, Greystoke bombed super hard and they spend a bunch of money on these ape suits and they had them <laughs> sitting around so they're just like I don't know put them in goonies huh? and like I've seen the scenes so like I think they must have shown them on a TV cut of the movie at one point but yeah I don't know just some weird B plot <laughs> it's not in there that sounds cool well, I'm glad they cut I- it <laughs> If it didn't work, I mean. That Tarzan film, another one I unfortunately missed, but another fucking Christopher Lambert. Like, yeah. He, he, uh, less brave <laughs> than some of his co actors. Everyone who plays Tarzan before Lambert takes over is showing full ass and dong. And then Lambert comes out and like I don't think he even shows his butt. I don't remember. Maybe he's like Willem Dafoe. <laughs> is that is that something that he does? I don't remember the movie, but there's some movie where Willem Dafoe has a weird penis, so he had to have a body double for a scene where his character's <laughs> penis is visible. He looks like he has a that. weird penis. Count, what is this movie? This is Alexander Nevsky from 1938. This is one of the two that would not be on like a proper top 10, but I want it to represent historical movies because I don't really have any in here. I have a few where, you know, like Paz Glory from the 50s takes place during World War One, but this is from the 30s and takes place in the 13th century, so it's like a proper historical thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, also on Tubi. Oh. It's also my only foreign language movie because it's in Russian and it was directed by Sergei Eisenstein and Dmitry Vasil- Vasilvev. And Paz of Glory showed how horrible war is and Alexander Nevsky showed how, how awesome war is. <laughs> how fucking cool it is, you guys. <laughs> well, it was probably much cooler back when people had horses and shields and melee weapons and not like guns and explosions. And well, it's weapons. also it's a propaganda movie that was made by the Russians to stir up encouragement for the Russians to fight during World War Two. So it was just okay. completely made to boost morale. <laughs> and it works, baby. It is awesome. <laughs> the costumes are really, really fucking cool. They look like out of Final Fantasy. Uh, it's amazing. The jokes hold up. There's like this cute Valkyrie woman that fights alongside of them. It's also the most recent movie I've seen. I have only saw it early on this pandemic before even like all the Russian Ukraine stuff happened, like before all that. But uh, bring it back. It was awesome. It was like, fuck it. I, I'll go fight in the war. Hell yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Give me a horse. Interesting. Propaganda works on me. <laughs> I really like this. I think people could appreciate it just for the costume design. 
and for it being so old and yet there's like it's really grand in scale and it's fucking cool i feel like this is getting back to old enough that people don't think about good movies existing <laughs> so right. that's that's interesting it's uh it's also it does like the seven samurai sort of thing but way before seven samurai where basically alexander nevsky's a prince and he goes to a town and teaches the peasants how to fight against the invaders interesting so on tubi it's on tubi it's good check it out people (laughs) if you're of that sort of thing be careful you might learn something careful you might want to just sign up for the military (laughs) (laughs) probably not cool in real life but who knows Okay. Slushy. Hi. Number one. Number one. You watched this yesterday. I watched this yesterday. Uh, This is a movie where no matter what situation I'm in, I will watch it and then watch it again immediately afterward. I am very angry about the reputation that this movie has. And not like in a comedy angry. This is like a legitimate, like seething anger that I have in my soul at all times. (laughs) (laughs) This is great. This is a movie about Street Fighter, you know, and Street Fighter, for those who aren't familiar, takes a lot of cultural tropes and its characters are caricatures of the place that they're from. Like that is, that's what it is. It's, it is a fighting game that is, you know, like a, a fucking Hong Kong movie. And this movie captures that mood and that spirit better than it has any right to like everybody is a silly goofy character because they're meant to be silly goofy characters but they are still all acted incredibly well you know the the writing is fantastic it has comedic timing that i i feel is like on par with you know, the greatest comedy films of all time. And there's one scene I always point to for this. And it's the scene where Ryu and Ken are talking to Sagat in his office. And Ryu makes a quip about how there's a curfew in Shadaloo. And he's like, Sagat, didn't anyone tell you there's a curfew in the city? And it's like a joke because he's running an underground fighting ring and everybody's out like, you know, past curfew. And Sagat's like, nobody tells me anything in Shadaloo City because he's, you know, big badass. Yeah. He's the crime lord of the of the town, of the city or whatever. And then a fucking helicopter flies overhead and it's like, there is a curfew in Shadaloo City. <laughs> and it's it's so well done. The characters look at it and are like, seriously, this is the joke you're making? But it's like, it is, like I've said about all these, all the fucking campy movies we've talked about, it is. It is meant to be funny. It is meant to be silly. It is meant to be, quote, big, stupid scare quotes bad, right? They end the fucking movie with everyone doing their victory poses. Yeah. <laughs> like, hell yeah. It is exactly what the, what everybody working on it wanted it to be, you know? And, like, everybody talks about how great Raul Julia is in this movie. And they completely just ignore everybody else who is doing as well. Such an amazing job. Yes, Raul Julia is fucking hamming it up and chewing the scenery and doing all those other fucking phrases that (laughs) film critics say. (laughs) He's a great fucking actor in this film, but so is everybody else. And it's, it pisses me off that this has the reputation that, you know, it pisses me off that that the only thing, what's that? Said I read online that it sucks though. That's the thing. 
God. It also pisses me off that the only thing anyone remembers from it is fucking it was Tuesday. When he's in the in his final battle with Guile and he's fucking reciting the Bible. <laughs> is it the Bible or is it Paradise Lost? I'm pretty sure it's the Bible. I don't know. Where he's like, and lo, I beheld Satan as he fell from heaven like lightning. Yeah. And he's like screaming the line while he's flying through the air. It is so fucking cool. That might be Paradise Lost. <laughs> I, uh, I looked it up and it was so cool. too, I guess. I don't know. That's so cool. But it's, a, it's such a fucking fun movie. And it's I will fun. watch it any day of the week. It is good. It is fun. It is exciting. It is funny. It is action packed. I don't know, man. I, I'm just rambling at this point because, like I said, <laughs> I, it pisses me off. You're worked up. I, yeah. I like that you like it. It's it's so frustrating that it has such a bad reputation. It's so seen frustrating it years, so that it like, in the mart. Sorry, go yeah. ahead. I said I haven't seen it in years. So I don't really. I remember thinking it's fine. You know, as a kid, I enjoyed it. I, I've, I've know, seen it a lot, and I always enjoy it. But any moment that you want to watch it, say me, and I will put it on your screen. <laughs> yeah. I believe you. Is it on Tubi? Yes, it is on Tubi. <laughs> every JCVD movie leaves Tubi every month, but they always come back. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just like, oh, it's a bad, you know, it's a bad representation of the game. Like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think. I think video games I, like you. You see this in like EGM, right, or any video game magazine, like. Like the people making the stuff about video games were like, you know, like 40 year old men. And they didn't like, <laughs> they didn't really know why kids like the video games. And like these people were writing the films right. as well. And they, they were like, well, it's just it's some videos of beeps and boops. I don't know. My kids play. I don't, I just, what am I supposed to do with this material? You know, and like now you see shit like, oh, the, the, the super, the, the finally the super faithful fan fan film that truly brings street fighter to like who gives a shit <laughs> you know like they made that fucking right. web series a couple of years ago that like like whatever who cares Everyone watched it. like if you want just play the fucking game if you want the game like let <laughs> let art happen and exists <laughs> right, even if it has like fucked up circumstances too. yeah doesn't matter <laughs> And I'll say too, I don't, I've never heard anyone mention this, and I'm sure someone has. I just haven't heard. It was written and directed by Steven D'Souza. He's that's who like was a also big the guy, writer. Right? Yeah, he, he wrote Commando, Running Man, Die Hard, yeah. <laughs> Die Hard 2, Flintstones, Judge yeah. Dredd. Like, this right, dude's a fucking prolific writer. You think, you think he wrote a bad fucking movie about Street Fighter? Watch it. Don't just don't just <laughs> listen to people on the internet say things are bad. We're past that. It is okay to be cringe now. It is okay to like things. Please <laughs> watch something and enjoy it. That thing in general is cringe. Yeah. You know? Right. Movies are cringe. You just gotta get over it. Yeah. Just fucking enjoy yourself. He also co-created Cadillacs and Dinosaur. I didn't know that. I don't know if that's good or not. I'm just Did saying. It, like like, like the comic? Weird. Not the comic, but the TV show. The TV? The cartoon? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, I like the comic. And I, th I think and the he cartoon he is decent. the producer of the game as well. That's weird to be the producer. Yeah, it's weird as hell. What the f <sighs> I mean, so, like, he's obviously a smart guy. And there's, like... Yeah. It's probably just, like, yeah, I don't know, video game equals kids equals write script for kids. Right? right, like that's probably what happened, and that's what people rallied against. I guess I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, uh, Slushy's. I'm gonna click this, and yeah, okay. Slushy's number five, and <laughs> what is this? Is that in the? I didn't use that poster. Otherwise, I'd compare my number one. 
Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Um, I talked about this on... Now, if I can get mad about something, I talked about this on the Lupin, on, on Castle of Cagliostro, where it was the streamlined dub, where they never called him Lupin. Uh, the first place... The, the first way that I saw Nausicaa was the infamous 1985 Carl Masek release, Warriors of the Wind, that cuts out half an hour of the movie and <laughs> completely removes any environmental lesson or moral <laughs> uh, and just like wants to turn it into a, you know, trashy fantasy movie with no point. But like, who you know? There's a lot of people in the world on the internet who are like, Carl Masek should be crucified for his crimes against anime. You wouldn't, you'd still be watching fucking Hey Arnold <laughs> if it weren't for Carl <laughs> Masek. Like that dude fucking brought anime to America, and like you know, you can make a shitty cut. We've talked about director's cuts in that old old show. Art, art will endure, <laughs> you know, like the, mm-hmm. it'll live. The original's still out there. It's fine. Like I saw this on, I rented this from the store when I was four and it changed my life. <laughs> like it is the most beautiful fantasy movie ever created to me. And it is like such an incredible piece of art. Like the, the designs of everything, the airplanes, the, the insects. I love bugs. See also them. They're cool. Um, you know, we talked about uh, Hide- Hideaki Anno <laughs> with Shin Ultraman. I guess he animated the God Warrior in this in the final scene, which is like one of the most incredible things that's ever been animated. Oh yeah. I I don't know. This is This is the best movie <laughs> to me like by a huge margin. And you know, I saw it I I wouldn't have been exposed to it until I was like 20 if it weren't for this so-called bad version, you know? It's like you don't have to It just I don't know. I already said it, but that's yeah. I didn't see it until the the full version, I guess. And I was already an adult. I I still thought it was really really good. I loved it. Is this the movie where there's? I don't know if it's considered truth or not, but the rumor that Miyazaki sent someone a katana and said no, that said no more cuts on it. I th- I think it. I don't know. Like that was. That was when they like got the you know the licenses to like theatrically release all of the Miyazaki movies, right? The Studio Ghibli movies. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it was this specifically, but yeah, that's <laughs> that's one of my. I, that's it's just one of those things that's repeated so over and over and over, and it's just like. I don't know. It's sort of lost all meaning and become a pair in my own head. It's like, who cares? <laughs> I don't so it's, it's Harvey Weinstein, I think is who they sent the Katana to. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Um, That's great. Yeah. I don't know. Um, when I was, you know, when I was like four, I would, I would sit there and watch this. And I, I remember making a, one of the, one of the Tormekian knights out of like clay. <laughs> I was just sculpting a little cool. dude. Um, like it's just, it's influenced so much of like what I think is like beautiful and cool. Like not, maybe not influenced, but like made me, I don't know, pointed out, <laughs> made me realize, I guess. Appreciate, maybe? Appreciate. What do you think, Slushy? Um, Since this is I your saw number this, five. Yeah, I saw this for the first time about two years ago when my partner and I were going through 
a bunch of Studio Ghibli movies. Um, I thought I wasn't. You know how you're like watching a thing and you're not liking it in the moment, and then like the next day you're like, "Damn, that was one of the best things ever." I can imagine. I kind of had that feeling with this movie, um, mainly because I think I was just in the mood for like the the little more happy-go-lucky child adventure type stuff that a lot of other Miyazaki movies are. Yeah. But um, every time I think about this film, I just think about the scale of it all. And like Nausicaa flying on her little glider thing. I'm, I'm really into like big things like huge things like Mm. things that are so large that you can't comprehend them yeah there is a lot of scale yeah it's very rare for a movie to make me feel that way about about the world that it's in but like i really felt that with nausicaa and it made me it makes me really want there to be a fucking nes game or famicom game based on it just because of the way my my brain is was, like I don't know if that would necessarily be a good thing or even a good game, but just I think there's an MSX game. Yeah, there are, there? there there are three MSX there are three oh. games of that era, and they none of them look like what I would want out of yeah. this kind of game. But you know, I would I would want a Goonies game version. Of the other right, game. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. But like you were saying about the bugs, like the bugs in this movie are so fucking cool. And in real life, bugs terrify me. I'm absolutely scared shitless of real, actual, tiny, one centimeter, fucking three millimeter I, bugs. I love any bug that isn't going to sting me. Yeah. I don't know. Like, Let's go ready to look at it. <laughs> like even that. flies freak me out just because it's like, I don't know. It's like with an elephant and a mouse, I guess. But, um, God, I'm realizing maybe it's just because of like the the different world and how how can one comprehend something so small and and what they see <laughs> anyway Beautiful. deep slush wow bugs are very cool visually and nausicaa makes me think of morrowind <laughs> which morrowind? is one of my top yeah because like the, the the world of morrowind is very bug centric yeah that weird organic kind of yeah, yeah, exactly. To it. And I think M- Michael Kirkbride is probably a huge Nazca fan. I wouldn't be surprised knowing him. Um, he was, you know, th- the guy behind most of what Morrowind is. Yeah. But I don't know. I I think aesthetically, this is one of the coolest movies in the fucking world. I think the the world of the film is a place I would love to experience. Uh in my dreams and it's just a really good movie. Have you read the manga out of curiosity? I haven't. Should I? Probably. Like that was that was also like directly directly made by Miyazaki. Yeah. Right? Like Nausicaa yeah. is, is his thing. It's yeah. not licensed at all. Okay. Um I will probably I, I will read it. I think sure. I I think that the movie is a better story. Um the manga has this whole thing about like the the worm tribe or something. <laughs> like there's like a tribe <laughs> of people that like live with the toxic jungle and their emperor is a wizard and wants to kill Nausicaa. And like I think I think the movie was smart to like basically cut that whole thing out <laughs> and just kind of <laughs> leave you know, leave it between well, the movie came and before Pajita. the manga, didn't it? I don't think so. I don't know though. Uh, I think the manga was first. I'm not sure. But Nausicaa. Nausicaa, amazing movie. I'm not big on Miyazaki, but I like Nausicaa and Princess Mononoke. I know I what this is. Together. This is King Kong. That's King Kong. Have you seen this slushy? Nope. Okay. Mortis, the only King this. Kong movie I've seen at all is the one with <laughs> Robot King Kong. <laughs> Wait, you didn't see the Peter Jackson one? 
No, I've never seen the Peter oh, Jackson. Wow. One. Oh, jeez, um, you have seen this, though, right, Mortis? Honestly, I don't think I have. Oh, <laughs> the no, original. I thought you would have. I, right. I, that's you know, okay. it's one of the, it's one of those things that's just like so culturally. You know, like I feel like I've seen every scene from this movie, probably like in Dr. Pepper commercials or something, right? Like just different, <laughs> right. different commercials over the years. Uh, King Kong from 1933, amazing movie. <laughs> Been commercialized to hell, as Morris is saying. Yeah, it's my like, it's my adventure monster movie because I love kaiju movies, I love Godzilla, so I figured King Kong. My Inner American comes out sometimes, and I had to pick King Kong, my number one. I also saw it before I was 12, so it seems like all of our number one picks were things from our childhood, I would say. No. no. Oh, yours wasn't? I you saw Street Fighter for the first time five years ago. Oh, okay. Well, then. Fuck right. that, I guess. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I don't know. So I, I don't saw know. Highlander as a kid. I saw TMNT as a kid. Well, for Morris and I, our number ones were <laughs> things that were kind of locked in from childhood. And yeah. King Kong was definitely one for me. Well, I, you guys have memories that function, so. I just, I just fucking love King Kong so much. There's some slightly problematic, problematic things in it, but. Like the, the, yeah, it was the, 30s. the Islanders or something. Right, like, the Islanders. Yeah. And yeah, it was the 30s. Um. Do you know the basic plot of King Kong, Sushi, or should I read it out loud? Yeah, it's That's just like a Lost World Jurassic Park. They go to an island and take a thing back to New York and it fucks shit up. No, do you know why they're going to the island? Uh, is it not to find King Kong? No, it is not. Well, kind of. I kind of, like, just from cultural osmosis, like, Jack Black is a director in the, right. the Peter Jackson movie, I assume that's a thing from the first from the it original. Is. It's it, it's a okay. greedy director who wants to like have a really crazy scene, so he brings a whole bunch of people to an island to find a monster, like a real monster to film. Oh, so it's just like that episode of the American Ultraman show, right? Yes, the Jeffrey Combs episode of Ultraman Powered, aka Ultraman: The Ultimate Hero. So, you know, King Kong's good. Great stop motion. You probably have seen everything kind of watered down in other material and commercials and TV shows and parodies, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is also public domain, right? It is not. I don't think it is public domain. No. Is it on Tubi, though? It's not on Tubi. I've seen... Like, when I was a kid, I saw the... Um... We were talking about this when I was playing the King Kong pinball. <laughs> is, there's one with like Jeff Bridges or something from the yeah, 80s. From the 70s. There? The 70s. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw that when I was a kid. But I don't think I've ever seen all of the original. So. Well, fucking rules. Probably it's should. my number one movie. I fucking love King Kong. I have an Imperial Kong, and then I have a... Peter Jackson Kong, and I still keep them in my room. I still love them dearly. I did see Peter Jackson Kong in the theater three times. I'm not, in hindsight, I'm not sure why. <laughs> like, I, the Peter Jackson one, I think, is too long, but it, it is too it, long. It's been getting, it, people loved it at first, and then recently it's been getting like a lot of hate online, and I don't know why. But it, it made me the feel. Peter Jackson one? Yes. I was like, oh, wow. Like, an adventure movie. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah. a new one of these in a long time. I, I think is how it made me feel. It's good. I like this one a lot. I don't. I've seen the seventies one. I have no memory of it, and I have no desire to go back to it. Maybe I should, but I really like the original. I like all those. Clearly, these old kind of black and white monster movies. Even though them is twenty years later, but kind of lumping these all together, like the big kaiju monster movies as one for my number one pick because I fucking love kaiju and shit like that. Now is this which is weird, depending on how much I shit on anime, but you know <laughs> I love kaiju it's... though. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think Slushy's been kind of no selling that. <laughs> what? 
Count, Count keeps saying anime bullshit. I just realized. Oh, yeah. I guess I've been no selling it too. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Count. I like I said, memory not very good. I forgot we were. Is this to uh, is this Fay Ray here that we're seeing? That is Fay Ray. Okay, now that's that's another cultural thing. This is also a pre-code film. For those of you who don't know, there was a big Hollywood code, and this was before that. So there's kind of risque things happening in King Kong. Interesting. Hmm. I didn't know about the Hollywood code. I know about the comics code. Oh, there's a Hollywood was- code. Fucking fucking ruined Hollywood. Wow. It Old. probably did, right? Because the, the code probably would have been some real fucking evangelical Christian shit, right? Yeah, it sucked. Although it helped noirs in a way because of all the constraints, but overall bad. Art is born from limitations. It can be, yeah. Like our five-minute timer. Yeah. <laughs> I've th- I've thrown the timer out the window here at the end, but. Right. Yeah, I mean King Kong is good. Uh, it's worth watching. I'll have to say about King Kong. So, here's the list on the screen. I don't know. You, I, you've probably listened to the episode unless you skipped to the end, so you don't need me to recap it out loud. Any any closing thoughts? This is us. This was fun. It was a, a deep in depth in-depth look at myself about what kind of movies I wanted to represent myself with. We're going I'm a, to... I'm a little sad that I didn't get to talk about Speed Racer or Jupiter Ascending. I, I realized that there are other movies that I really like more than those. I kind of expected Speed Racer to be on here because you, you always I did too. talk it up numerically. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll I'll talk about it a little bit here if you let me, but fucking um i did that stupid <laughs> round robin waste of time bullshit uh which i i regret doing because of how long it took but not because i don't regret it because it made me remember that i love satoshi Kon as much as i do um as well as ricky o but i realized as i went through it that speed racer ended up pretty far down the list it's at number 30 john not goodman also in thought. speed racer that's true he plays is. he plays he plays Pops Racer and fucking God, that movie's so good. We talk about camp and how critics are morons. <laughs> if anybody's watched the old dubs of Speed Racer, you know it's like weird and disjointed and strange and over the top. You know, even in its native Japan Japanese, it's like it was a movie made on a shoestring or a, a series made on a shoestring budget, you know, like a lot of those shows from Well, the movie the wasn't made on a shoestring budget. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, if you are friends with Duke Donuts, he'll tell you about how ridiculous the fucking uh, post-production special effects were. Um, it is a movie with issues, but it is a movie that is so true to the source material in a way that a Hollywood movie would never be, would never ever be. It is a movie for kids. It is a movie for uh, hallucin- hallucinogenics. It is, a- <laughs> it is not a movie for uh, people with uh, a visual epilepsy. Uh, please don't watch it in a dark room if you have issues with flashing lights. Um, but goddamn, what a thrill. Uh, not as good as Watch Out, We're Mad, or The Crow, or The Cat Returns, or Hobo with a Shotgun, or the where, 10 movies that I've talked about. Where did Watch Out, We're Mad end up? Uh, 23. Right above Highlander 2, right below Spirited Away. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. Uh, what are we doing next? Uh, well, we talked about playing some Earth Defense Force. 
I think he means for remove film from Trey. Our next episode, episode five. Subscribe to the The Patreon and and you can. (laughs) Are we on that? We we may as well get six and seven out of the way. Might as well. Might as well. Um, What were we? Oh, maybe. Yeah. We can watch versus. Are six and seven curse and retro? Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yes. That's exciting. Is it? Uh, for me, it's it's thrilling. It's yeah. uh it, it's, We're gonna find out, <laughs> and you're gonna find out. <laughs> Even if Retro Puppet Master are as bad as these two numbskulls keep saying, I'm gonna. I'm going to enjoy the hell out of the experience of watching it and watching them be angry and upset at it being bad. That's the spirit. So, uh, anyone in the audience, do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? I, tr- I put on a noise gate on myself partway through this episode because I realized watching the episodes back there is <laughs> some noise from me. Uh, let me know if that sounds okay. Sounds like from the Twitch chat, that does sound okay. Any other comments, any questions, you'd comment on the YouTube. Contact one of us on Twitch in your life. Uh, yeah. We'll be back. We're filming this one a little early, but we'll probably be back next Friday. Friday, sure after, so. Friday after next. Not to be confused. Never seen film. any of those movies either. You know, you we'll got, probably have a discord at some point, right? I have nothing else to say. Uh, I hope you all have a great week. Thank you for listening. This was fun. Yes. Yeah. See you later. Mm.